Hello and welcome. This is week 26 of the Friday Night Pro League of Candlepin Bowling. Today, the visitors, Central Park Lanes Team 2, take on the home bowlers, Team Ryan's Millis, here at Ryan Family Amusements in Millis, Massachusetts. There you see the standings. Central 2 comes in sixth place as the top eight will make the playoff bubble after week 35 of this season. Ryan's That's right, Greg. Ryan's will be in the role of spoiler for the rest of the season. That other voice you hear is Bob Lee, our, my color commentator today and executive producer here at Candlepin Bowling Network, streaming live to Facebook and or YouTube, but in this case, both. Well, Chris Winniars has arrived from uh, Environs up north. <laughs> He has the longest commute of all, and he, he just arrived, finished his warm-ups, and he'll be bowling first. On these, the PDP Crawford lanes. He'll be on 22, and Dan Esdale will be leading off for Millis on lane 21. Greg Guillard with the call. The lineups today, Chris Winniar's first for Central 2, then Steve Latch, Sean McDonald, Scott Douglas, and Tim Douglas, and for Millis, Dan Esdale, Frank DeLuca, Jimmy Keefe, Brendan O'Dowd, and Dennis Green. Winniar starts off, he's got the head pin here, We'll get that pen cam sorted in just a moment. Oh. And he's got the 9-10. Dan Esdale, big hit to start out. He's got the 8-pin. Everyone's yelling and shouting to start off. Just the atmosphere <laughs> you like on a Friday night. We're on the wrong pins. That's all. That's <laughs> oh, I see the problem there. <laughs> yes, there. Winnie there spun the wood in. He's got it. 9-10 converts. Esdale's try. Just left of the pin. So it's fair to start out for Winnie Arts. 10 plus the value of this next ball coming on up. That's it on the second uh, time around. 10 box for Dan Esdale. My name is Greg Guyar and welcome to Candleton Bowling Network. As I mentioned, Facebook and YouTube. Great to have you all filing in here. I can't see the numbers or the comments in front of me, but great to have you all here. Please do like the video and share it with a few people you know so that everyone can experience this great edition of oh. Pit. Win Winniar's off to a great start. Strike on spare. As now crushed the head pin, he's got another pin to stare at this time. It's the five pin. No wood around. For those of you new to Pin, a very special welcome to you. Three balls per frame and any pins on the plate stay on the plate and can be used as live wood. Who needs that? Dan Esdale gets a spare. Even the spares are rare in this game, so that's a good start for him. Oh. And of course, I put that score up incorrectly. We're fixing that now. Esdale at 20 through two. Steve Latch now up for the visitor of Central 2. And Frank DeLuca, our friend at Alley Chat, for Team Millis. Bit of a height mismatch here. Latch starts out on, he's missed the head pin. That's a frequent enough occurrence in this game. One, six, and 10. DeLuca mixing pins. He's got a diamond if the wood doesn't do anything, but Ooh. it will. I'm wondering where that wood will stop. The upside-down triangle isn't good by itself. Yeah, I, I think he wants to play a tip and see what happens. Tip of that piece that's up against the plate. Flash should be open in the second. To the left of the head pin there. DeLuca hey. spins. He went to the right tip. Beautiful spare. Frank. Latch misses the head pin again. That'll be seven to start out. So the format of the Friday Night Pro League is two match points to the winner of each string and two for total. Three strings in all, so two match points for each of the string. That's six, and two more for total makes eight, and it's these match points that determine the standings. Latch looking to find the range. He's between the third and fourth arrow, crosses over even, and gets a triangle. Triangle number two, two, four, five. Frank DeLuca washes out four horsemen. Six on the fill, makes 16 through one. Latch, yes! Oh, sweet. On the crossover side again, he's found the range. He's got a spare, and DeLuca runs it down. The spare on the four horsemen. Great bounce back there. Even the spares are rare. I'm probably trying to write down too much. We'll see. Sean McDonald up third for Central 2. And Jimmy Keefe. We don't see him much on our broadcast, but he's bowls out of the Millis once a month league here at Ryan's and very formidable as well. Had about a 370 his last time out. 
That's a hay bale for McDonald. It goes about 20% of the time, if I recall my Candlepin Bowling Network stats correctly. Yeah, and we have mirror image hay bales. Jimmy Keith's throwing 32 miles out of his hand. Back of five, that is to say. He throws from down near the 10 pin. Comes across with a fairly straight ball. If there's any movement on it, it's a right to, it's a right to left spin. Okay, eight for McDonald in the first. Threw that one straight as an arrow. There's Keith's uh, uh, cross lane ball to get him nine. Really incredible how it got all the way from the 10 pin arrow to the four pin on that one. Cross lane is one of the most common well, they teach it to beginners, even though it's a very effective technique, of course. There's a reason they teach it that way. Oh, sweet break on the left for McDonald. Looked like that was going to be a 4-7-10. Four, four, four horsemen for Keefe. Seen that leave a few times on lane 21. The rightmost lanes Fair. here at Ryan's. The hardest one for many a right-handed bowler to pick. All right, no everyone, issues. everyone for Central's who has a mark so far. Keith narrowly misses the head pin. This is going to make this out difficult. Wisely goes for two, but he missed left and got one. Right, go intentionally left and hopefully pick up a few pins along the way. Brings up Scott Douglas, one of the two Douglas brothers you'll see, and Brendan O'Dowd. There's an interesting irony here in that Brendan O'Dowd is usually on the squad captain by Rich Lamoni, that's Central 2, at the ICC uh, World Championship. At least he was last year. Scott Douglas, those pins will mix. He's got the 7 pin, and that wood was very close to taking out the 7. 36 miles an hour out of his hand. Douglas's, that is. O'Dowd's got a softer delivery, but an effective one. Mm -hmm. O'Dowd's is 32, um, but he's got some spin on it, and it comes out 27.2 by the time the... The pickup is a spare is good for Scotty Douglas. No doubt narrowly misses it, and the wood comes off the sidewall, almost takes out the head pin from behind. So also on that uh, hatchet mint team with Brendan O'Dowd, Dave Chestercove, and John Irby Kafalis as well. We saw that on our broadcast here on Candlepin Bowling Network. So New Dowd, Brunswick. O'Dowd takes 10 in the first. Now Douglas on the fill on lane 22 on your right. Zippity doo -dah. The marks are 5-3 to three already. Douglas' fill is 7. Du got the job done on that one. 17 through 1. See O'Dowd. Just wide. No, he's got the head pin. I beg yep. your pardon. And the 9 fell late, so... Look at the monitor, Gregory. 310. Triangles go about one and three times. Uh, 45%. It's a 45? little better than that. That's, eh, 45. Ah. Dang it, inflation got me again. Just nope. wide of the two. Three ten is doable, though there's wood in the middle there. Oh, it's short pin. So so to speak. I think it was probably 15 inches, just like all the others, but it was short of its, of, uh, <laughs> when it swept across, it, it was short on the three pin, which will still stand for a nine. Uh, yeah, he had a piece of that uh, pin on the way by. Scotty is at 27 after two. That's right, two perfect frames so far. Now Tim Douglas and Dennis Green. Interesting lineup change here. Uh, both sides around. I believe Dennis Green. Both these bowlers were anchors last week as well. But I thought I had it on word from Rich Lamoni that Tim Douglas would didn't usually like being an anchor, but here he is. Did pretty well his last time out here. Yep. Big big news on Timmy Douglas. So it was three weeks ago he got his hand stuck in a in a pin setting machine. Oh. And on his job at Hanover Bowl, and uh, he was injured, so he's out for one week. Came back, bowled decently. Uh, he. he and then I, I covered him in an ACST match. His ball speed was down to 40. You know, he normally throws 44, 43 <laughs> miles an hour. He dropped down to 40. In his warm-ups, he was also throwing 40, but just now he, he came out throwing 42. I think Douglas is back. It's his, it's his ring finger and his pinky on his, on his ball hand. He ends As, up, he ends up with a 7 here. Yep. Thank you. Dennis Green gets a 9. 
Yeah, we, we saw that for an ACST as well. He had a 688. That was against, um, was that against Mike Nardone I was? And then he crashed a 558 in his match against Charlie Collins. That one we yeah, broadcast. Yeah, that, that was the one where he was, he was, he was still injured. And uh, I think that's what everybody should watch. You know, we've got the Easter Classic coming up at the end of the month. He's the reigning champion. Timmy also was the 2022 uh, tournament, you know, pro, pro series tournament champions. Um, major, you know, that's a major by anyone's book. He's, he's one of the, absolutely, one of the premiers Ooh. of the game as Dennis Green. 257. Woohoo! Sweet pick there. The pin plate is lively here in Millis, but you still have to be skilled to get them. Trust me, I know offhand. Timmy gets eight, that's 15 through two. Eight. Okay, I had him wrong with the nine. So we'll change that to a seven for a second and then change that to 15 for two. And back to the top of the order. Yep, everything's looking good on my side. Of course, it's that scoreboard that's authoritative. Right now, the bowlers have flipped. Follow the colors. Purple is accurate. <laughs> Dan Esdale on a spare. Picks up six. That's why he's got the four horsemen. We're going to see a lot of those diagonal four, it seems. Chris Winniar is on a strike. Ooh, oh. what a time for that. Look at that wood bounce, though. It all the careened all the way over to the eight pin. Didn't take anything, unfortunately. Hey! As he runs it down, he's got his second mark in, in a row. The classic added just to throw less pins into more. Let's see. Winniar's is the three, six on the right side, two, four, seven, eight. The perils of hitting it too full, even though you pretty much did your job. on the other side, though. Ever the solid pinner he is, he goes yeah. for the more of them. Yep. So because he, he's he's in a fill, he's got to look at the four. He's got he's got a better chance of getting the, the the four pins than the three, right? Of course. Anyway, that's an eight fill, thirty-eight in the second. Right over fifth arrow. Nine, nine's pretty fine out of that. Got a good crack at that. Forty-seven through three. Lead up to nine pins now for Central 2 after the first time through the order and the top bowlers. Pin falls down in the back. Dan, well, es Dan Esdale, our reigning Class B champion of the Atlantic Candlepin Singles Tour. Justin Waters, reigning Class A champion. Jeff Scott Little, Class C champion. And, of course, we have Class D is new this year. And, of course, I should mention Mark Weber, main ACSD champion, even though that division boy, is... Uh, out of commission this time around. He is he is one of the great bowlers now. Split there for Dan. So another six fill off the head pin. Head pin fell late. That's right. Spilled it. Ooh. When yours, well, he got that head pin. That's a four-way split. Five, seven, eight, ten. Wood looks pretty flat in front. We'll see. As Dale uses the wood in front. It rang around the six pin. And to the chagrin of everyone. It doesn't go. Let's see which side of the wood Winniers tries to play this on. Goes across the center arrow. God, I left. A dodge the front piece of wood, in fact. Past the left side. Good shot. As he completes 10. Just calmly through a 57 through the first four. And as they let 52. That brings up DeLuca Latch. Steve Latch, of course, was on Team Metro Bowl last year. This time around, his 115 average tra uh, trails only the Douglas brothers on the team. Had a similar average last year. Actually, it was a uh, 114 road average that time around. So, if anything, trending up, perhaps. Duluka crosses over across the head pin and knocks everything down but the head pin. What would that be, a super crossover? Latch got on them all, yes! That was a nine fill, though. Down the... Frank Face threw a good fill in his face, but Steve Latch with a strike on spare. Frank matches the mark. I hope I don't run out of ink in this pen here. Marks can be just as good, but double strikes do happen here frequently. Pete Crawford Jr., as we alluded to earlier, can tell you that he's got 227, which Ali Chad had the scoop on on their Facebook page. Frank DeLuca and Brendan O'Dowd pointed the camera at it at the right time. Frank uh, takes another nine, another eight out of it, almost nine. 
Ooh. Wow, Latch, darn near double. That was a thunderous hit on the head pin. Luca. Full oh. on the head pin, <laughs> oh, it works. Oh, oh. Showing how it's done. That's four marks. Frank's on a roll here. Latch now. That's just a hot dog boy. Almost disappointed he has to shoot at this one. He's got it. Sweet. Remember, he didn't have the range earlier with that seven box. He's totally got the jitters out now. We're seeing some good shooting here. It, so when, when, when you say Frank is on a roll, that's that's just a hot dog one, Greg. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah right. I mean, do you really call it a hot dog roll, though? Some people do. Probably in Chicago. Yeah. Jimmy Keefe. Comes in from the right. Hits the three pin on the right. Sean McDonald on a spare. It's a good one. That pin every single time so far. Keith, oh, just wide. Give Central two a chance here. Yes, and the wood piles through. Back to back for Mac. Oh. Nine. Keith grabs that stick. That gets encouragement, of course. Chanting at your bowler is an art form, I would argue, and Team Millis doing just that. Jimmy Keith wearing a black Millis shirt, incidentally, but he is very much the purple team today. Crosses over on to the head pin in the one two pocket, leaves the baby split on the right. Mac, only the first time he's missed the head pin this string. Cluster of five. Sean McDonald did very well. He had a, oh, what was it, a 144, including a double strike start to string three. The last two, uh, times these, uh, that was uh, Hingham and Central too, excuse me. Got my notes tangled. All right. Keith takes a nine, 35. He's still open. Eight All right, four. A no head pin eight. And McDonald's off to a good start, 50 through four. Brings up Scott Douglas and Brendan O'Dowd. Lead is 20 pins. You know, the most interesting thing is Scott Douglas took some personal time away from the team in weeks 12 to 16. And upon his return, his first series back, 397, which was his second Sweet. best series yeah. after his uh, 414 in week three. O'Dowd guides it nicely down the lane to split, I'm afraid. A touch full, maybe. Hard to control that. Stop hitting the target so well. Yeah. Douglas with a skinny slice by contrast, but the pins mix and he's got a triangle. Missed his last opportunity, although it was on a triangle. Oh. O'Dowd, what's too flat to work with. Was hoping it would be more at an angle and the ball could trampoline off. Douglas. That looks Ooh. just about perfect, but it wasn't. I mean, it, I guess his ball's got a, got a right to left spin on it and it countered that the movement. The movement was left to right. And it pushed through with no no touch on the 10. Nine box O'Dowd, 28 through three. Douglas completes his 10, 37 through three. You can see the yellow smudges on your screen right there. Those indicate the marks hanging for each side, two apiece. Those are the marks still to fill. I'm, le I'm leaving them in the Canadian format. I like it. Upside down, spare marks. <laughs> you, you, you set up back up in worlds, Greg. I, I enjoy it. Excellent. Yeah, I, I liked doing that during the singles competition in particular. I, you know, when in Rome, or when in Moncton, rather. Spare O'Dowd. Good on the board right there after a good head pin hit. He'd been on the head pin the past three. Powers through here. This goes wide for Scott Douglas. Marks are tightening up right here. Central two only leads by about a mark or so. One Anthony. more stick for Scotty. That's 45 through four. Take a look, see here. Central two still with a significant lead to say the least, although with the high fills here, I mean, we usually say spare fills are about six and a half, but I think they trend up a little bit here. 
No, those are those are pro averages. I mean, I, I think I think it's about right. The pro average was six and a half when I when I said it. Though even with the house effects, you would say here. Oh, though. I. Eh. Okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe. I mean, the, these these guys are averaging one fifteen though, and the pros that I was studying as. Green pushes nine and touches the five in the back, but it doesn't fall. Speaking of breaking the scale, Tim's not far off the range, I tell you. He's through that fill. And a spare in the third. Good sequence for Green here. Had a sub 300 his last time out, so he's really looking to rebound here. Uh, he's at 38 according to the official scores. We're going to make that change right here. Got the nine. Right and Dennis Green is capable of explosive bowling as well. In fact, Tim Douglas does not have a 400. Dennis Green does, and it was actually a... He had a 400 of his own. I think it was 400 even, if I have my notes correct. That was the same day Frank DeLuca unloaded 422, which is high up on the leaderboard for high triple at the end of the year in the Friday Night Pro League. And those are the only two 400s Team Ryans has had all season. All right, Dennis was off the head pin, but got it on the way back. Tim Douglas' speed is back. That was 43 miles an hour. And his accuracy. Look at that hit. A lot of wood. That sometimes can be a bad thing. He saw it wasn't the most convincing for Green, but he's got three straight. These bowlers giving the marquee performance you'd expect out of the Friday Night Pro League. Tim is wide on this one. And now Millis with a big chance to close the gap. That's how it should have uh -oh. gone. All Ten right. bucks. 34 through four. Zach, let's, let's check all these scores. 34, 45, 50, 47. I'll see, I'll go over to this screen and drag it down. Yep. All right. I got look. the same thing for what it's worth, although we'll see how we got on here. And three marks to two. So, Millis. Yeah. It's that Dennis Green sequence just then. Yeah, I mean, I, it, Anchor's they, doing work here. They lead by one. Back to the top. Winnie Ars for box five. Chance to get over as the nine pin is stay standing. Esdale got the five pin standing. I'll leave those scores up in the fold for... Just a few minutes so people can enjoy. Winnie yards now. For the spare. Oh! Tripped on the wood. Don't poke it in the eye. We saw it just barely on that pin cam there. Esdale, yes, gets it. And again, Ryan's building a mark advantage. Winnie yards was unlucky to trip on that wood there. He did get a nine fill out of that. And a ten box. Brings me to 76, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. That's it. How am I doing on pacing? Sorry. All right. So Winnie R's open. Oh, hello to Moncton. I see there in the YouTube oh, chat. Sorry, Moncton. He, he's not open. Oh, 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 well. <laughs> I mean, what would you call it? A blank? But if he's closed. You, I don't know. He's, he's not working on a spare. Use, that, use, use extra words. He shut the box. Yeah. Box? Yeah. Uh, shut the box right. is a dice game based on high rollers, which Alex Trebek hosted once. Five, five in the bonus for Esdale. That's it. He's got a clear. Right here. It he, is he's okay. going here. You see, you got that lateral motion. Could have gone towards the eight pin. Short pin does it instead. Eight box. Can Esdale pick up in? Yes, he can. That's nine. 84 76. Winniars with the lead in that pairing. Yep. Steve Latch and Frank DeLuca. DeLuca on a run. Actually, Steve Latch is on a bigger run. DeLuca's four in a row. That's and right. Latch three in a row with a strike in the middle. Got a nine drop spare in the fourth. Here's his bonus ball. Sort of throws a backup ball. He almost threw it over the center arrow, and unfortunately, that's the thanks he gets. That's a li little reminiscent of Tim Jalbert's ball. 
DeLuca from cross lane, he's got it full, and he's got a five, no, six, six. fill. Right. I'm switching cameras here. Let's see here. Ooh, rip a two pin right off its spot and nothing else. Too bad for Latch. DeLuca, backwood isn't frozen to anything, so he's got to pin this out. Interesting pinning duel. Latch has the easier time of it. Needs to run down this group of three. No marks either side. Uh, for the two spots anyway. Latch is eight. DeLuca does well to get the two on the right side. No harm, no foul there. Just to the left, you see the outrun. Officially, he, so he's at 77, DeLuca is, huh? Yes, he is. Okay. There's that six fill in there as well. That's right. Outrun the bearer banner to the left. Great uh, elimination-style tournament, much like elimination-style in the Pro Series. Hosted here at Ryan's, both handicap and scratch versions of it. And doubles version of it as well. I know the Finns have been running it for many years, but boy, however many more years they can run it, it's greatly appreciated by everyone. It was recently, the, the uh, singles scratch event was recently voted the fourth most important singles tournament of the year. It's the highest, highest prize, one of the highest prizes, which makes it a major in my books. In a poll of bowlers. In a poll, yeah, on, on Candlepin Chat, I put a poll out. Yeah. Along with the Easter Classic. Ooh. Ooh. What collision for DeLuca. Nobody can believe it. I was going to say the Easter Classic World Singles, the tournament champions, and uh, outrun the Bear Scratch. The four major tournaments. 10 and 10. All right. 80 for Lash. 87 for DeLuca. Jimmy Keith now with Sean McDonald, our number three bowlers. If you haven't figured it out, the format, five bowlers, five on five, they bowl two at a time. World style. McDonald's got the 136. Keith. Sweet. Oh boy, I hope this wood doesn't ramp his ball away. He's got the 10 pin all by itself. Yeah, I wonder if I could make that even bigger, that, that pin, pin cam shot. And a good look at it. Let's see if the ball hits the pin. He got us scared of it. Well, supposedly. I, that's not terribly fair to say, but he just came wide of it. I don't know if I can make this any bigger like this. Back is 10. Uh, Let's see. Yeah, let's just try that. We'll never know if it was on. Keith gets nine, though. All right. Keith, Keith's average is 110. This is a sixth week substituting for Ryan's. Very solid among the team. Very tight here, a two-pin lead with two balls in hand for Millis. A two-pin lead for Central 2 with two balls in hand for Millis, I should say. Don McDonald has a chance to shave one back here if he can run the 6-10. He got on the outside, good shot. Reels in a big one. Okay, three pins still standing for the third ball from Jimmy Keith. One four seven takes the two in the back. Good choice, fifty three in my opinion. Good to see you, Chuck and Chad, and uh, to Joe as well. I apologize. Sound off in comments, and please do like the video so that more people can watch Candlepin Bowling Network live on Facebook and YouTube tonight. The most watched of our regular uh, events, Friday Night Pro League routinely getting 1,600 to 2,500 views from the public on YouTube alone, plus many more on our Facebook affiliates through Candlepin Chat and the network. Oh, now it's got a good break off the headpin here. That fill oh, is oh, oh. eight. No, the 10 stands. Huh, yeah. Scotty? Oh, down now up to 46 oh, through four, and a right. chance here with the 1-7. That red line's looking pretty nice at it. Needs to get to the right side. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. He tipped, nope. tipped it and <laughs> kind of cued it through, but nothing connected on the seven. 
Obviously, you don't have to tell him twice. He knows he needs to get on the right side of that head pin to drive it through. Scott Douglas, a nine box, 54. And O'Dowd, a 10. Well, I'm glad I looked at the Facebook comments as well. Hello to Scott and Ken, and hello to Ian. Congratulations. Uh, thank you for taking time to watch today from the hospital, and congratulations on your third child. Oh, sweet. It's worth everyone watching us in the maternity ward. Oh, hey, everybody. Let your baby see. Hey, now they <laughs> drop down to the seven for O'Dowd. That's a, I don't want to wake the baby, but that's a really good hit for both bowlers. Let's see if they Scotty can run Douglas it down. Douglas has a pin standing vertically. He has to hit it. Oh, he needed oh. to poke it in the eye that time. At the risk of sounding like a golf commentator, just put it to the right there. Yeah. I think I, I, I think I think she can manage the volume better than that. <laughs> let's, let's let's give everybody else a nice voice. How about it? Hey, <laughs> what a great <laughs> shot by O'Dowd. All right, it is a. This is a good right. one, the second mark. That was the one you wanted to miss right. 66. Scott sticks with his nine. He's got 63. All right. Good to see you, Dave. Boxes five and six in the first string of three. Remember, two match points to the winner of each string and two for total. That's right. A seven-pin lead for Millis and two marks to one, both spares. There's a real horse race for seeds six, seven, and eight right now. They're separated by... Just a span of two points, actually, between Central 2, Academy 1, and Metro. So they certainly want the points here. Right. Green in the bonus. Grabs. That's six with a diamond. Yep, six. It's still wiggling, but it won't fall down. Or, oh, sorry, it's seven. It's seven. I apologize. No. Yeah. Douglas six. is the one with the diamond if I look properly. Oh, seven. It was seven? Okay. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Let's make that a 63 then. And he just got on the 2 7, so he will not mark in this one. Tim looking to find the range. That's a 10. He was a little luckless with that diamond. He's got a 10 indeed. And green pins out as well. It's good to find. I mean, Tim's been on the head pin more than not. This time he's got the three and two washout. Dennis Green, yes, God. the ten pin goes. <laughs> and he's right back to those marks. 83. This can go. Douglas really needs to put it. Third ball, ten box. If you were wondering, 43 on that last pitch from Douglas. Woo! He's back. Well, the power's come back. Yeah, it, it, his accuracy was affected too. It's it, you know, it's two of the fingers. It's two two of the fingers that uh, you in the throwing hand, and uh, it's the ring and the pinky finger. Like I said, at the, at the last knuckle. So th those are the scores. Yep. Uh, 14 pin lead plus that strike from Green. One spare apiece. Fingertip control is everything in this. I mean, Timmy does put the ball down in his palm more than a lot of bowlers, but it still matters. He, yeah. he comes off those fingers. He, I, I spoke to him about yeah. that. All right. There's, there's a 10 pin up on Esdale's side as well. Winniers darn near spilled that pin for a strike. A six pin cluster. Oh. And he got that 10 pin, so the five pin you see is all he's got. Yeah. Too bad. We'll leave, we'll leave the full scores up for just for the first, you know, for a couple minutes so people can look Second at Second bite at the apple, Winniars has it. Okay. For his fourth mark. So a 10 box. So Winniars would usually be the anchor classically for Team Central 2, but this time in the leadoff role, doing pretty well. He had a 355, which... Uh, was second tops on the team. It's Scott Douglas's 372. Tim Douglas's anchor was 347. Let's see, we got four pins. Off spot four? Hey, it's going gone. That's back door. He back, yeah. I, I don't understand how the four horsemen collapsed, but they certainly did. Well, they darn near, right. he nearly had a back door double strike. Estale furious with himself. Thought he put a pretty good bit on that. He's at 114. 
Instead, it's After 10. After the 10, Phil, and the 10 with two balls coming for yeah. Winniars. So isn't it interesting? Winniars has no head pins the past three, but he's working a great string of marks. Checking on that yep. score for Esdale. He's at 96. Yep. That is correct. All right. That's what I have as well. All right, we're going to flip over to the other scoreboard. There we go. Frank DeLuca throws his hands up immediately. He's taking out the side saddle triangle left side. Let's see. Latch. Look at that three pin. Take a walk. It finally drops. And the seven pin as well. They keep going. So lane 21 offering another great chance for Central 2 to take advantage. Luca can't get it done on this one. After a string of four marks to start out, that's why his string's working so well at the moment. Nope. Latch missed oh, it the second yeah. time. I liked his rhythm, but something about that pulled. Luca eight. Yep, on again, off again for Steve Latch. It's going to be very interesting. Might be that so-called X factor. He gets an X. That's 10 box. Either Sandy and hello, Jim. From Michigan and Halifax, respectively. This is the Friday night pro game of the week. Greg Guiar and Bob Lee from Millis, Massachusetts. We're about two thirds of the way through our first of three strings tonight. Frank DeLuca from Millis on the right. Steve Lash from Central Park 2. Central Park in sixth place coming into tonight's match. Trying to hold on to one of the top eight spots that will make the playoffs. And Got a chance. It, uh, Put some pressure on the five from behind on that spare bid. Might pick up some pins. DeLuca needs an out. He got the head pin. All right. Seven box 102. So Lash could pick up half a mark here if he could grab a stick. He does. Still DeLuca leads in the comparison, 102 to 100. And overall in this match, oh, boy, that is one pin, and the marks are even. Oh, how'd that come up to be. I mean, the bowler gets up and throws two marks back to back, as was the case of Winniar. Suddenly yeah. the gap closes up. It matches the official scores, so it's not just me, it's not just me hallucinating. Three position bowlers up now. That's Jim Keefe. Two, five, seven, eight, ten. Hmm. McDonald throws that left to right ball a little too much left to right. Got seven on that fill, though. 77. Keeps try. Can't put a bit on that two pin. How about John that? McDonald. Ooh! Oh, there's a back Watch to the wood. The Watch pin the in the wood. back. The pin in the back. Oh, it's stabilized. It's stabilized. After it gave it enough whack, I think, to go. I was hoping it would hit with the red line. That's just a matter of chance on that one. Eight for Keith. He's looking for his first mark. That was a tough one to pin out of with that split. McDonald gets nine. Sean McDonald was a member of that uh, Academy Three team that came out of the seven seed to win the the championships at Union Street um, Lanes. You remember that one uh, from a couple years ago? Yes, that was one of our. That was the first one that we covered um, every match of. <laughs> that was the team with uh, Kaz and and Beaupre and. There were six members on that on that squad. They were throwing hard. <laughs> I think there were three 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 bowlers throwing forty five on that on that team. Well, pray of course, bold with the hatchet men, uh, the Rich Lamoni squad. Rich Lamoni captain of Central Two, Brian Fournier, captain of Team Millis. All right. Sean McDonald now ready to throw his first ball in the eighth. Sweet bid, but oh, that that was cruel. Wood seven nine. Borg queen. Never was much of a trekkie. 
The Borg is an interesting idea. That, that's in the channel. That... Looks good to me, Quips. <laughs> well, and it'll be a seven. That's in the rule book. Bowler says what he sees. <laughs> so it's nine for Sean McDonald out of all that. The pin on the second ball did not count. All right, number four bowlers. Penultimate time through the lineup. Yep. Tight one here. Brendan O'Dowd, 66. Scott Douglas, 63. O'Dowd on a spare. Yep. O'Dowd solid as ever. No, nothing lower than nine, and he's got a couple marks now, including this one to fill. Wearing the purple jersey that matches the walls. I wonder if that's how they came up with it. Of course, Team Exeter is purple as well, and I have no idea where they came there's, up with that color. There's not much purple at Exeter. They, a, they would be white. If I had a biased opinion, it's like sort of a teal or turquoise that Academy th uh, Academy 3 has. No, Academy 1, sorry. Academy 3 is red. That's the Ed Woodside squad. All right. O'Dowd 7 on that fill, though. That brings the lead down to 4. Both Another teams triangle. with a strike. Ugh. Wanted to get on that object pin, of course. Wood didn't help do any favors, though. Oh, great ball. Cluster of six. God, you love it when you get the five to come out of there, but it, usually the the four and seven or the six and ten are, the, are, are not the ones to worry about. Ten for O'Dowd, 83. And a nine box for Scott Douglas, 72 through seven. I, since I muddled Academy 3 and Academy 1, I'll just mention some big uh, strings. First of all, from out of Metro Bowl, Nick Zuffalato had a 182 on his way to a 427 for the series. 7-10 split for O'Dowd. And that looks like the 3-6 yeah. for Scotty. And then other massive strings, Ed Woodside, 162, and newlywed Jeff Walsh, who bowled Ooh. a 166 two days before he said his vows. Congratulations. Mr. and Mrs. Walsh. Oh, nice bid. Sent a message halfway. And that one poked the uh, piece that was between them. You don't want, when it's sticking out, what do you, what do you say, Greg? When, when there's something sticking out. Sticking its tongue out. Sticking its tongue out. Do not touch it. It will bite. All right. Scott, uh, Scott Douglas bites back. 10 okay. to 10. Wait, wait. I see nine for Sorry. Brendan on that one. Uh, it's not. It was nine. I apologize. Okay. And that means it's back up to four pins for Central 2. And one of the strikes is coming up here. Dennis Green, remember? Here we are. Whoop. Comes over. Okay, gets two. And we'll throw a second ball. That old chestnut. Timmy. Well, he's rocketing it down the lanes. As soon as he gets dialed in, that three pin won't drop, but that could be useful. Green, yes, that mixes the fill. The fill is nine. Big, big pins there. Monster string working. He's already 30 above. Douglas throws it away. Third ball coming on up. Dennis pins out. So 102 through seven. And Tim gets it out. That's nine. That's quintessential candle yeah. pin bowling. Sometimes the pins are tough. Sometimes you just don't find the range. But that third ball can dissolve a lot of sins. Okay, that one cream across. Ooh. So what Green gives up, gives up in miles per hour, he makes up for in that right to left action. Nine and the six was the last up on that strike. Jimmy Douglas, big Strike to end things the fourth time through. He'll be at 73 plus two next time he throws in the last Deadwood, ninth and tenth. Deadwood has to be removed. The pin is too far forward in touching the Deadwood line. Two feet in front of the pin plate. Okay, Chris Winniar has pushed it away. Little to no oil, even here at Ryan's. Here's the bid. Right. That was... Okay, that's how big this string could have leave. gotten. It's not a mark, but it will leave a mark. I don't know. That's not there. Not a good metaphor here. One twelve. 
Yeah, fills of nine, nine, eight, and seven for Dennis Green. Going very well right here. We'll switch to the full scoreboard here. Uh, looks like we're a pin light on Ryan's side, uh, Miller's side, uh, or we're a pin too high, rather. Oh yeah, Dennis. Dennis has a. That's no, a, they're, they're correcting it. it. It's it's correct. We were right. The scoreboard <laughs> had to be corrected up up top, not us. Candlepin Bowling Network. We're right sometimes. Yep. Winnie Harris on a strike. Deft touch down the lane. Oh, beautiful. Yes! Yes! Double! What? I think you should explain the double rule in a minute. <clears throat> well, I mean, a strike gets you 10 plus the value of the next two, but... Box eight, that's going to be a whole lot. It's going to be 20 plus the next ball in box eight. Esdale doesn't get the check mark done. Sometimes he gets a little agitated with my, himself when he just starts losing the range, but he does have a way of recovering as well. You don't get the Class A AC, ACST for nothing, the Atlantic Candlepin Singles Tour. Yeah. Yeah, the image of Dan Esdale struggling in that final at the ACST last year, putting the putting the uh, cloth on his head and just calming down and then ripping. Oh, oh, victory. they mix. Oh, nine. Oh, nine. Oh, it's nine. filling itself. It keeps happening with Chris oh, Winniars' goodness, ball. 143. That's through the eighth string. That, that ends up being a 29 in the eighth. Yep, that's right. 143. And then a strike a smudge, if you wouldn't, if you would please. All right. Asdale's got the four horsemen. Kill surprise. Kill surprise. I should really be better in a front jacket. Oh. It's gone. Wood takes it. <laughs> hey, as he runs it down. Spare for Israel. He, he was at 104 through nine. Yep. 114 and, uh, and 10. 114. It's a good string. Four marks there. Chris Winniars, with some good fortune, but also great spin and accuracy to his ball. Winnie is at 153 now. 153. And 163, right? Uh, 163, 163 and a ball. That's and it. And a ball. That good. One, two, three, four, five, six marks. Effectively seven with that double strike, as I say. Since it has the power of two marks. The mailman. Did he? Oh, yes, the 10-pin oh drop. A 170. He's in the he's in the top five now in, of, of the season, if not... It's close to maybe third. Let's take a look here. He picked up 49 pins on, on Esdale, who threw a 121. That's great bowling. Just great bowling. Yeah, for an average of 110. Oh, I got to hang on. You get those I don't, I don't know why I didn't pull up the high singles for each bowler. Goodness. 170, meanwhile, in high singles. That's going to tie for fifth with Jimbo Ayotte. Only one's higher. Josh Daly, 172. John Winchell, 174. Next up, a lot of 182 and... Um, what, in the 227? Uh, yeah, Pete Crawford, Jr., 227. So, so he's in the, that's the sixth best score of the season, then, I, <laughs> if I counted that right out of your head. Okay. Yeah, tied for fifth. Great score. Let's just try the seven-pin oh! cluster gets it. Flash. Getting it on the four-pin. It goes sometimes. Yes, and Frank DeLuca makes his own seven pin conversion. This time he took out a side saddle triangle and he's at 112 and a ball. Here we go. More big strings cooking. Probably none bigger than Chris Winniars. No, and, and, and see, see the lead is now 25. With Tim Douglas on a strike as well in the bottom slot. Yeah. Central one pouring it on. So maybe Limoni's lineup change was a stroke of genius after all. Not that I ever doubted him. Oh, eight, nine, and a backdoor strike. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> For DeLuca. Bob Lee, what is happening out there? <laughs> uh, I had a couple today on these lanes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, hey, you, know? you get to bowl in it about the same number of times. I think it is lane 21. Okay. 
We're going to see, I think we're going to see 600, but we'll yeah. see. It'll be close. The fill is six for Latch, by the way, 116 through nine. Third ball working. And an eight box, 124. Hundred seventy, my goodness. Sean McDonald and Jim Keefe. Keith looking for his first mark. Hey, eight for DeLuca on the first ball. That, so that crosses him into the one hundred forties. The string is 141 for Frank DeLuca, and that gets applause from his teammates. And drops the lead down to 10. It's not out of the question. It is, I mean, there's a strike on the board from Tim Douglas, but it's very much open. We got six boxes and 10 pins. That's a lot of room. Scroll up, we'll see Sean McDonald and Jim Keefe. And with the way these fills have been going, who knows? This is far from over. Okay, half Worcester left. For McDonald. Mm -hmm. The sticks might start mattering the closer this margin becomes. Keith raises his hand on that one. He, yes, six he carries. I think he threw a little bit extra into that, and it went nicely for him. It drops here. I don't think I don't think playing the wood is wise here. We'll see. He doesn't need it. Had to have that fill, and that's a big time for it. Ooh. McDonald pins out well, almost got the 10 out of that 4 7 10. 104 through 9. And Keith filling his first mark. First McDonald. He has three marks in this string. That was on the right side of the three pin. Yeah. The big fill. Oh no. Oh. What a time Tough for that. six. I mean, the fill's okay, but it looked like a better ball than that. So as a result, he's going to get stuck with a sub-100 string unless he can pull off a miracle here. They can happen. McDonald can't find a way. Yeah, just here, here my, my advice is smash him into the wall. Six, seven, eight, ten. Yep. Hit the six, six, I mean, hit the uh, six, ten into the wall, and then there's a great chance of a rebound yeah. coming back and sweeping, but it yeah. didn't happen. That bid got it. That bid got everyone's attention, even though it missed, because they knew if you slammed the 610, it could carry him. Yeah, Just like he said, he's going to try it again. <laughs> okay, it wasn't there. Eight box, 92. I mean, Jim Keefe had a 364 back in week 10 when Ryan's hosted Metro, so. Okay, the lead is down to four, but strike um, yeah. from Timmy Douglas in the five slot. Both Scott Douglas and Brendan O'Dowd, the number four bowlers. So sure, Jim Keefe will be disappointed with a six fill, but it was instrumental. Douglas, meanwhile, Scott Douglas has an eight drop. Brendan O'Dowd, 10 pin bowler and a duck pin bowler. Now a candle pin fanatic. You need oh, no. You need a lot of focus uh, on technique in those games to really emphasize that above all. Dan Esdale, also a 10-pin bowler, in fact, has some 300s, Oh, I understand. no, he left that one right. Okay, both are open in the ninth. No oil patterns, no ball cores, no help here. Douglas takes 10. And gains a pin in that exchange. Lead is up to five, plus Tim Douglas's bonuses. Yep. That's confirmed. Five, six, seven, five, seven, two. We know the quirk of the technology here, the Cubica system. Okay, Douglas has the four horsemen left. Wood falls away. Oh, Dowd crosses over in. That was a monster strike in timing it especially but seven six pins are in the uh in the pit third mark and what a moment for it douglas has to pin two four seven otherwise he seeds three sticks immediately does well to get them all yep. 
That might matter. 102 for the string. Just like that six fill for Keith mattered, those three sticks for Scott Douglas might matter. Even though it's not the string quite that you're after, your team needs you at every ball and every moment. You just never know what will be the winning moment. How about a double here? Strike fill. Nope. Well, I shouldn't say no just because he missed the head <laughs> But We should know better, Bob. <laughs> we're, we're, we're on Route 109 here. We, we know different. <laughs> it's one, two, and eight in this case for the final ball of the string. When I did my uh, missed head pin study, only only one of 2,000 professional head uh, shots that missed the head pin ended up in a strike. <laughs> one of 2,000, huh? Eight. That was eight on the fill and a 119, right? That's it. That's confirmed. And a lead of three for Millis, but bonus balls come in in the hands of Mr. Timmy Douglas. I love the Cubico scoring system, honestly. I don't mind that they have the 10 pin notation. I do mind the 10th frame reset animation. That's nonsense. We oh. don't need it. <laughs> oh, Tim dropped nine and almost doubled it up. Five pin remains. For a spare on strike and a seven pin lead and counting. Timmy Douglas. He's on it. Big moment. Absolutely. 93. So he finished the eighth in 83. This could roll. This could yeah. roll. This could roll. This could go. Yes. Oh, that's <laughs> Dennis Green. We're not done yet, says Dennis. With his fifth mark. He's at 122 in the ninth. All right. Uh, lead is seven. Bonus Douglas. balls, both teams. Got to follow Ooh. it up. Did he ever? Oh, oh, oh. Come on, Wood. That's tough, but not impossible with the Wood. That one crossed uh, about oh an inch too far. Yeah, the small falls. Yep. The small fills are trouble. That's a four. Let's see. Tim, high on the wood, gets it. Oh high on the goodness. wood to enable it all to spin in. And he was at 101. Now with that spin, 111 and a ball. 111 and a ball, yep. And that goes as well Holy for Green. Holy 136 and counting. Yeah, it's a 10 spill to the nine. Extraordinary. To convert that six-pin bunch. All right. I I mean, it's an 11-pin lead. I think that, that – congratulations, Central Park, too. Yep, that's a that's uh, a done deal. But great bowling from Millis. And uh, look at these scores, six. <laughs> With six more, that'll be a, a 117 finish. Yeah, and Tim finished strong. That's dangerous. And the screen again, really small, but that's 141. That's two 141s from Millis. But a 170 wow. for Chris Winniar. 626. C Central two through. To 614. Yeah. Let me, and 626. And then the official score, they're being tallied right now. 10th frame reset animation. And That's confirmed. 614 is confirmed. All right. You don't need that bowling pin with a stop sign wagging your finger. You're not, what are you doing? What are you doing? They don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Well, it's uh, how it, right. it, it would be useful in ten-pin bowling with the pin setter yeah. because I'm the, just going to show everybody these, those are the scores, top to bottom. Of, of course, the big 170 from Chris Winniars, 141s from one, Dennis Green and Frank DeLuca. Um, all the others up there for the moment. Now we're going to clear that out and move to the second string. Dennis Dale on the three-pin to start here. He's got the one and two. Chris Winniars. Doesn't get the mix this time. He's got a six down and four to go situation. One, three, six, and eight. No dice for Esdale. One, three, six, and eight. Mr. 170. Yes. Sweet pick up there. Hello. Hensdale picks up 10. Hensdale had four marks in that last go of it. Head pin out. It's 3 6. Pick. Side saddle triangle right. 3679, I have that as. 
No, it's a three, four, six, nine. All right, Chris takes nine in the fill. Just like that, he's ahead of his pace from the last. You know, he throws 10 of those, he'll have a 190. It's true. No, and he started with a 20 bucks in the first. I I'm sorry. Well, you know, paces are paces. It's true. And he missed that one, so he's off that pace. He threw a, he went spare strike. Dale pins out the eight for an 18. Spare strike, nine. Spare nine, 10, eight. Spare str double strike, spare seven. Nine box for Winniar is 28. Good, cr good crowd here. Candlepin Bowling Network on Facebook and YouTube. Great to have you all here. Wherever, and I mean wherever, you may be watching. This is second, our second of three strings. Frank DeLuca threw a 141. Nice full blast, and the 10 is the last to fall in the one-two pocket. Steve Lash is a little further left on the two pin and leaves a Cleary. The Cleary is the four horsemen, plus the sleeper pin on the left side here. The, the eight pin or the nine pin via Cleary right. They fall at about a 20% rate for pro bowlers. That includes the misses like that one. Might get the head pin anyway, interestingly. Yeah. Yep. But it's still still there. And Frank. Already. Ryan Family Amusements, of course, in multiple locations, including near the Cape as well. And some that are just arcades uh, near Plymouth. Oh, beautiful use of the wall for the 10 there. You see what, what was happening there, Greg? That, that pin was lurking out there in the, in the roadblock zone, and uh, he just went with it, smashed it into the left wall, came back, and took the, took the eight pin. Sometimes the cap does work. DeLuca. A similar ball Six to his last one. Seven. Ugh. Yeah, that's a hand skyward moment. Still filling. They're still falling for Steve Lash. Seven on that. Not Phil. Like I said, DeLuca has a 422 triple to his credit. Okay, eight. Phil for the strike. In this Friday Night Pro League, I should hasten to add. <clears throat> Seven down, three to go. DeLuca. Nine. Latches try at the one, eight, and ten. Got eight. Okay. 18 through two. So remember, Central two, uh, two key match points there. That's going to help them out as they try and stay in their sixth seed position here. In fact, if they get an eight no, they catch up to Academy three and force them to get some points. Otherwise, Central two can keep climbing and climbing and climbing. Top eight make the playoffs, and then it's a single elimination, 1v8, 2v7, and so on. Number three bowler, Jimmy Keefe. Comes in on the three pin for a Cleary right. McDonald throws that left to right ball, gets a setback right where you want it, but setbacks often mean you hit, hit the ball well. Yeah. Sorry, Dan Castle. I think I like that name. Oh, 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 oh. My goodness, that Threat. piece of wood just died in front of the nine. It was bouncing even a bit. It was it was breakdancing or something. Like kind of like boom, boom. Like did you see what he did there? Kind of like Frank got robbed on that earlier one. Yeah, that was a really nice. Cap of the wood with McDonald, I think. Tip. Ten for Keith. And a ten to match for McDonald. McDonald threw a 113 in string one. Jimmy Keith for the big... Big spare in the tenth to get to 92 after struggling through the first nine. Yeah, it was a key six. It could have swung the match there. Tim Douglas refused, and Sean McDonald with a strike in the second. That was a hammer. He says emphatically. Okay, cap of the. Ooh, no! Dodge the cap of the wood. Yep. Interesting. 
Had a, he gotten it, I think it could have deflected into the five. I think he missed a spot only yeah, just. I think so. I think even even hitting it on the side might have worked, but I don't, no, I don't know. Nine for Keith. He's at nineteen. Great to see Keith here. I'll see him on Sunday with Millis once a month. Coming up, yeah. it will be a full house, all twenty-two lanes. You balancing that in Exeter once a month pretty well? I'm one of a handful of bowlers doing both. You know, I want. I'm, I'm in six leagues, Greg. Holy smokes! Ace, and doing this, including the ACST and the two once a month leagues, uh, and then I bowl Tuesdays in Millis, Wednesdays. I'm sorry, Tuesdays in Norwood, Wednesdays in Millis, and Thursdays at Central Park Lanes because it's a great sport. <laughs> oh, strike, Scotty Douglas. Speaking of great sports. Well, Scotty had one mark in the early going and then pinned well to hang on to his triple digits here. No doubt. Spare. Scotty missed a few opportunities early on, so we'll see how he gets on this time. If he finds, if he dials in, we'll just see. Dowd used to have a five-step approach. He got, you can oh, see yeah. that on King of the Palace. You're right. Is that a three-step approach now? Or is he four? Uh, three, three, I'm no. fairly sure. I've seen him. Okay, well, let's, let's count him. I guess that's a – well, let's, let's put the fills in, though, first. Six each? Yeah, six each. Left, right, left. Yeah, it's just three. Okay. I remember talking to him about it. It was a change just with the way his body worked. Scott Douglas still filling the strike, in fact. Neat sticks. Got a couple. Ooh, he got oh, it! Oh, oh. It's the three, four, six, and seven, and a whirling dervish takes it all for a spare on strike for Scott Douglas. O'Dowd nine, 25 through two. <laughs> and Steve Latch with one of an all-time quotes, that's how you get disappointed. I think that, I think that was the punchline. What was the setup? <laughs> Well, I can't imagine Scott enjoyed having the nine no-mark frames in a row there. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Maybe that's it. There, how's that for context? All right. Green comes in a, a, all the way across onto the left side of the two-pin, gets five. And Dennis Green with a 109 average and threw, threw 141 in that last one. One more time. One more. Okay. Got sticks at least. Douglas hops one in. Yeah, sometimes when you hop it off the foul line, even one that doesn't really, not as rubber as the others, it can throw off your ball curve, and that does matter. Green pins out 10. Tim Douglas. Seven. Just seven. So starting the early going. Yeah, Douglas ended up with a 117, but he had to work hard in the ninth and 10th for it. And that, it was that work that ended up winning the match for yeah. Central Park, too. Last week, 115, 107, and 125 at the end. Oh, 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 Green shakes and rattles the 10. He had a triangle back there a little a moment ago, but that one disappeared. At least he's got wood in front. Douglas half Worcester. He's got wood in front of the wood, too, so he can hit pretty much anywhere he wants. Boom. Yeah. Spare Green. I mean, you shouldn't, but you're able to. Definitely miss left on that one if you're going to miss. Douglas, oh, whoa, look at this. Zipply! <laughs> you, know, you know something? That pin changed direction about two times. It was like a homing pigeon. It just it, it realized it was taking the off ramp too soon and joined the mass pike just in time. You see the smile on his face? My goodness. Oh, good, to, good to see him. That, that, that was silly. <laughs> <laughs> Latch is just like, where's mine? I need that confidence. All right. <laughs> well, let's... Uh, I should just put a lav mic on him, for goodness sake. Let's uh, switch it over to the full scoreboard so people can see what Winyard's happened. <laughs> Strike. We're close again, by the way. Now, Winyard's trying to make it... Trying to add to that four-pin lead. I really am running out of ink. Could people stop throwing strikes for heaven's sake? It's already the third of the string for uh, Central 2. Asdale, boom, yeah. spare 
easy as you like with the you call it a candy bar, don't you, Bob? Yeah, when it's one when it, you know, it looks like a looks like a Snickers bar to me. I don't know. <laughs> it's like it's candy. It's e it's e a lot easier than hitting a Jeez, first the president mentioned Snickers in the state of the union. Now everyone's talking about it. <laughs> I mean, it, it it's Mr. Good bar or yeah, man. 100 grand? Does anyone eat those? I, I used to. But not, not, no but kidding. I think with inflation it's a billion dollar bar now. Yeah. There's a 5. Dan doesn't get a big payday out of this one. Haha, -ha, four, Phil. At one point, I was throwing pricing game names at Paul Grant because he was a big fan of the prices, right? Like I am. That was while we were covering the Pro Series in Augusta, one seven ten Sports Center. Phil is seven on the strike for Winniars. No, seven on the strike. Sorry. Uh, so he's at forty-five. Third ball's coming up for each. There is a 10 pin on that pin cam. Yeah, it's that full scoreboard that's kind of blocking. Can we move the pin cam a oh, smidge left? I could do that. Maybe after. Oh, yeah, I can do that and on, Bob, the, on this and camera. Bob, and Bob, and Bob, <laughs> and Bob. I know. Winniars just picked up three pins in that exchange over Esdale, nine to six. I'm switching over to the other camera. Oh, oh there we go. That'll the, help. The other view, anyway. Same cameras, just different views. <laughs> With different scoreboard view. Yeah. I, I'm now kind of confused about what the score is, but it looks like it's 54 for Winniars. And 38 for Esdale. That's it. Okay. After four, of course, as we move down to Steve Latch on the head pin strike. And right on cue, just as he was asking for it, he gets it. He's going to be disappointed, I guess. Um, that's the way to. This is going to mix for Frank. <laughs> he got his head pin. He almost got a second strike. Seven pin. That's tough for the lefty. Not sure I followed the joke. <laughs> Why it's disappointing, but because it'll, because it'll make you excited and make you think you're going to win, but they did win. They think know. different. <laughs> okay. So Deluca missed that to the left. Didn't foul it away, which could have happened with that wood. So still a chance for a ten box. That's it. Yes. All right, the lead is now 10. The total pins lead 22. Owing to the 626 to 614 victory in string one for Central Park 2. It's a diamond for Six match. on ball one of the fill. DeLuca, this could go. Ooh, it fell the wrong way. All right, that, that wood is... That was very close to that, eventful. That wood is in the blocker zone, touching the touching the uh, edge of the plate in front of the six pin. It's a spare for Latch. On strike, so attack on 20 more, just like that. DeLuca has to negotiate the wood carefully. He does. Oh, sweet. Actually needed a wall shot for it, but it was on the right mm -hmm. spot. I think, yeah, that's what Lash did last time, right? He had to use the wall in a similar vein. Good for the goose, good for the gander. Very even on pinning in those two spots. All right, number three bowlers, Sean McDonald on the right. Jimmy Keefe on your left, our sub tonight. For Ryan's of Millis. Subs often enough. Central. Okay. Central 2 got fantastic help from Corrado Pani in relief there. Tony Levesque uh, on TikTok and YouTube got the scoop on that. He had a 380 Corrado Pani. He's one of our – he's one of the great light bowlers, man. He, he, he and Joe Smith are uh, real heroes for those of, us, those of us who throw the ball about 30, 30, 31 miles an hour. Spare on strike McDonald. Keith needs sticks. 30 through 2, 40, and a ball through 3 for McDonald. I notice Keefe is wearing a sort of a brace on his left ankle. Hmm. I'm not sure if that's typical for him or could imply something different today. He gets a 7 box at 26. Just the littlest things, the littlest of pains or aches can make a big difference. That's right. Okay, three, four, five on the fill for McDonald. 
by that logic, it's a miracle that you've gotten to the point you have, Bob. <laughs> I do mean that flatteringly. Nine drop. And a shake on the 10. Yeah, you know. Phil is nine for McDonald on that. That was on a Phil. Oh, oh. Yep. Sorry. I'm this is it. Yep, that's in. That's in. Thirty-six. Jimmy Keith gets his mark. We waited till the tenth last time for that. And a pat on the back. And an eight for McDonald. He's at fifty-three. Again, I was. A, I do think Jim can absolutely get a bigger string here. All right, the lead is checked with the official score. It's thirty-six pins, one seventy. Two to one thirty-six. Marks three apiece. Right. Oh, yes. two, it's two oh two one sixty-six. It, 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 the, the official a quarter score of our scoreboard. scoreboard. Yep. Um, Scotty Douglas drops eight and has a candy bar Ooh. and O'Dowd rips a strike. Whoa. This goes for Scott. He's got three straight. 48. Scott Douglas three. wearing his D-Generation X Mixed Worlds teams. I think he called it one of the great sartorial wonders of uh, Matt Nichols, who designed the graphics That's on right. that. That's the Webster Timber Lanes logo on the bottom of that American flag design. You can barely see. The team was the Douglas brothers, uh, Nichols and Ashley Breton and... Uh, Brittany Underwood. Brittany Underwood. What a squad. Yeah, Brittany Underwood and Tim Douglas, uh, recent oh, Pro oh, Series oh, oh, champions. Oh, oh. For double, it's shy by one. Beautiful looking wood. Everything but the cap on that piece to the right is great. And wow, that, of was great, close. that was a great shot. Didn't quite produce a spare. Candy, the candy cane pin, you know, the, the, the one that looks like a barber pole, shot over there for him. Brandon takes that takes that block blocking piece of wood out of play and spares on his strike. He's now at 45 through three full and 45 and a ball. 55 and a ball even. Is it 55 and a ball? Sure is. That's 20 more to that. And a ball through five, four, and Scott Doug Douglas on 63, no mark four. All right. And we're all caught up here as Tim Douglas and Dennis Green takes the lane. Tim Douglas, five-step approach. Speaking of 10-pin influence, one, two, and eight. Boston Bull Hanover, you can practice it both. Two, four, seven for Dennis Green. I pull the Hanover more I could. It's just so far. Spare. Timmy gets seven and another. Close for Green. Gets foiled. He gets 10, 37 through 3. I'm, I'm doing math here. Three extra marks for Central 2 right now. That explains their big, big lead right now. It's two out for Tim on the fill. 36. Dennis, so Dennis Green with a big chance to take advantage. So Tim, okay, Tim, i, I got to make a score correction there. Tim's at 36. Yep, that's right. Okay. He darn near blew it up, but the seven pin stays put. Green, got it. Another mark to sit on. He's marked in second and fourth frames. Timmy's got nine, 45. So a big lead developing for Central 2, 40 pins up. You see, Millis does have all those extra marks to fill, though. Yeah, that's I was going to say, the mark, four, margin, okay. the mark margin doesn't seem that far apart. And now that... Yeah, because they haven't filled them. <laughs> Look at that, nine, all four of them with nine drop spares. You know, Frank DeLuca, Jimmy Keith, Brendan O'Dowd, and Dennis Green. Home, like. home bowlers, home cooking, maybe. Dan Isdale wants to join them. Oh, dear. He rips the half Worcester, though. This can go two. Yeah, those ones fall at about a 20% rate, the pros. Right. After they make a half Worcester. Except when I'm watching them. 
but you know, anecdotal hearsay. Kaboom. There you go. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I've, I watched a lot of them. I, during, I, when I had my stroke, I think we were alluding to before, yep. and during the pandemic when, when we weren't allowed to bowl, I spent oh. a, a lot of time, shoot, when you are, Mr. 170. Ringing uh, four pin. I spent a lot of time watching old Channel 5 games and any, anything modern pro that we had and, and collecting stats on leaves and things like that. Tried to get 2,000 um, fills you know, to, to make that set. 2,000 fills with uh, spit where they missed the head pin, 2,000 fills where they hit the head pin. And that's, how, that's where my stats came from. Anyway, I'm, I, I'm talking, and now I've lost track of the score. It's 64 for Winiers. That's right. The 48 and ball, you're there. And I think Ezzy's on the spare, though. That, that is a, yeah, that's a that's one, a one fill, fill, I'm sorry to say. Just ripped out yeah. the 10-pin. He's 49. Significant. And he's on it, but... All right. If he gets sticks, though, he still comes out ahead, though. So this third ball is important. Winniars has the one and six and two pieces of wood there. Don't mind me. Boom. Gone. Boom is right. That went as one. And Esdale does get it out and turns six into nine. Picks up three pins. All right. Second bowlers now. Steve Latch for Central. Frank DeLuca, both on spares. DeLuca blending in with the wall. <laughs> I'm going to move, I'm going to change scoreboards so we can see more of the wall. There we go. Most interesting team out of the rip, uh, playoff bubble is Team Riverwalk. I muddled my words there. If they go 8 0 tonight, they could catch up to Team Metro and start making waves in the race between six through nine. Remember, only top eight advance. Okay, little bit of uh, exploring for shipwrecks over there, but that's four. It is four. It's a maddening game of consistency, that's for sure. Eight for Latch, he's got 56 through four. DeLuca, 1, 2, and 10. Latch, 6, sorry, 3, 5. And he hit the outside of the 3 pin. Hmm. Has the ball to bury it in the 3, 5 since he goes left to right. Decent 9 for DeLuca, 60 through 5. Latch pins out. Ten box is 66. Good halves working for each. Sean pace for 120. Ryan Family Amusements in Millis, Massachusetts. 22 lanes of good old Candlepin fun. Fantastic arcade. Fantastic staff who knows they're bowling and are hospitable in every other way as well. Check it out. Ryan Family Amusements oh. in Millis. Nine and a tap on the seven pin. For DeLuca. If you're in the area, of course. Thank you to wherever you may be watching from. Ooh! Uh, Latch had a play at that one. 1-3. One, he does have a shot at this leave. This is where uh, Clico the e Eskimo made soda back in the last century. Spare DeLuca. On the tricky corner. He got the seven pin this time. Stymied him the last time. So his third mark. Latch rips the three pin off the spot. See the reaction annoyed with himself. He's, on the fifth. he's got his 10, 76. Very solid, he's only, he's got a single eight box and the rest are tens and marks for Latch. DeLuca's only lost two pins in his own right. Okay. So, marks are still four to one now. Uh, four for Millis. Yeah. Jimmy Keefe. Overall in the string central two plus one. Comes in on the right side and he got seven out of it. Working yeah. ball. He got a still. 
They really all have to in order to make this mark advantage significant and really shrink it. That can go easy. Yep. Yes. Back to back, Jimmy Keefe. One six ten for McDonald on the third ball. So Watt sticks here. Otherwise, Ryan's really will start to take advantage with this mark margin because they have actually tied up the marks as it stands in terms of literal spares and strikes. The box is nine. McDonald sixty two at the half. Haven't asked him about it um, recently. A, a pin falls down without a ball, so we're going to get a reset on 22. Sean McDonald, one of the great sports fishermen of our area. He uh, is in a competition, and he explained the rules to me, but I would be doing a disservice to try to. But you, you, you take fish out of the ocean, and, the, and nine drop for Keith on that one, loud to the... Down to the five pin and a nice piece covering. Nine drop by McDonald. Anyway, he's, he's a great fisherman. Let's just say it that way. Uh, <laughs> Ryan says big bass wheel, I think. That's all I can say. Yeah, yeah. Spare Keefe, three straight. He's now at 72. McDonald's to hit the wood. So now, as a result, Keefe has two marks to none in that visit alone. And a nine. Okay. So, things just got a lot closer, didn't they? How close are they? 27, but four marks to one. So, we're going to say it feels more like 11. And Jimmy Keefe only had one mark in that ninth box last string. Three straight. Has that turned this one? I mean, actually, no, it's, it's, it's more like nine. Nine, nine minus, you know, because it's usually it's six and a half pins. Odoutsville will help tell that story. Oh. Okay. Penultimate bowlers. That's two. Mm. So We've seen a few of those. That is. That shrinks that mark advantage. Uh, We've seen this eight pin cluster go as well. So Douglas started off with three marks in a row. He's got, I think he's hit every head pin. The strike. An eight drop and three splits. Interestingly, he never had a head pin on either of his two spares, Tim Douglas. On the splits? Oh, okay, maybe this, the head pin fell, but, it, but he didn't hit it in the second. All right. Ten and nine, Scott Douglas picks up a pin. 73 at the half for Scott Douglas, and nine makes 66 for Brendan O'Dowd. Good crowd watching out there. Please do hit that like button, that thumbs up button if you haven't already, and on our page as well, and subscribe on YouTube so that you're always in the know about our latest Candlepin content. Either way, just by watching, you hey. really are helping us out and helping the bowlers out, and we thank you very much. That two and two split just did, just withered down into a nine drop for O'Dowd, and also yeah. late pins fell for Douglas. They both are taking aim at an at what is essentially a naked pin. I think Scotty's got a little bit of crazy help on the left, but he shouldn't hit it. Spare down. Don't get distracted by the detritus. I don't think that's how they write it in the textbook. He hits it, though. Uh -oh. So, again, O'Dowd has a chance to sit on a mark. And, again, we could have a situation where two through five are sitting on marks. As it is, that's exactly what's happening. Yeah, that's a ten. Could be the same after box six, I mean. It's getting interesting. Scott Douglas is on a pin perfect string at the moment. No pins left standing. Hey, right, my advice to those of you watching at home, get this up on your on your high res screen. Watch it on uh, you should get a little bit better resolution on YouTube if, if you if you have time to plan. Yeah. It's all Google products, Chromecast if you got that or a Apple TV. Sufficiently intelligent device. Here's Dennis Green, another one on a spare. Boom. Oh, it looked like I was going to be a two and one, but it, but the ten pin fell. Could have been a strike almost. Eight yeah. fill instead. Douglas strike. There we go. The beast trying to wake up again. Oh. Yes. And Dennis Green, by the body language, you could tell he loved it down the lane. Back-to-back -back spares. So I'll put 
green in there, but 55 and a strike for Douglas. 65 and a ball of the half for green. Spare fill, head pin. Nice. 10 drops, yes. Eight fill and a chance for another. Very similar to the last ball. Tim Douglas on a strike. Cross the head pin double oh my for goodness. Tim Douglas. Never mind. That great comeback. Of course he is did. Suddenly staunched. Did you ever doubt him? Dennis Green matches with a spare. Although Tim Douglas ends up getting an extra mark as a result of that, Green doing very well as anchor for Millis. 83 and a ball through six. Tim Douglas, 75. Plus bonus And all balls. the smudges ever through six. All right, well, I'm going to have to show the uh, full scoreboard. Yep. All the numbers are... All the numbers I have down are correct for what it's worth. Okay. Top of the order, box seven. Remember that green square indicates a double strike that helps you out, so it's really three marks for central two to four for Millis. Winniars. Nine drop. Okay. Millis, in case they got, got a feeling like they were going to be ahead, now they're still trailing 20. You know, yeah. It, it was down the to Winniars just dropped nine, so that's increasing, yep. in fact. Okay. Of course, takes a mark off the board. Can Winniers put it back? No. no. Well, quite a few boards to the right of that five pin. Still again, the man is raking. As Dale grabs sticks, needs an out. Not as desperately as he did the ball before, though, of course. That's ten. ten. Yep. Winniers has only left two pins standing, solid as ever. Eight box for Dan Esdale. 66 through seven. Actually, you know some what? seven. Now, Winniars needs another mark, but he could already be on 400 pace at this point. I mean, it's just outrageous how well he's bowling. How about that seven pin for him? Yes. Guess again, Winniars have another look. You got a strike. Wow. Esdale, five down. We call it a Caleri for Bob Caleri. Lexington resident. I grew up in Concord. Nearby. Yeah. Uh, so who else? Like, uh, John Winchell is from Lexington as well. Now lives in New Hampshire. Nine gone. Yeah. Uh, nine for seventy-five. That's right. It's a central two pouring it on here. Yeah, one of three checks. All right, I'm going to move move back to the. Uh, Get that keyboard shortcut working, hey? <laughs> All right, we got uh, Frank DeLuca on a spare. On your left, Steve Lash, open. Spare. Split that's breaks up. That's Rich Lamoni, actually, the non-playing captain tonight. Barking at that four pin to drop, and it did. You can see the top of his head on your screen, Rich Lamoni. <laughs> Unmistakable. Nine drop for DeLuca. That's on a spare. Yep. They're not going away. Last pace lace in this league is still probably the better than you folks. Sorry. This is about the best league going. I don't, I don't know that there's another one that, that compares. It's a, originally out of, out of metro area. You know, you had to be, if you were, it was, it was different lanes. You had to be within an hour's drive of metro. They made an excuse. An exception to allow Millis in this season. Um, these bowlers were out of, out of Wakefield last season. Um, mostly out of... Um, a box and a 10 box. Here at Millis, uh, Brian Fournier. All right, so 84 for Lash. And 89, 89 for DeLuca. Yeah. Yeah. Central Park Lanes, East Boston. That's a ways off Metro. Exeter Lanes in New Hampshire. Hingham, that's South Shore Country Club. Academy Lanes, Haverhill, Massachusetts. Metro Bowl Peabody and Riverwalk uh, in Amesbury. Also Team Lafayette, its former name. And Ryan's Millis. Here we are. Check Mark Latch. DeLuca's got a seven out. One, three, and nine. Hmm. You think that wood's good? I'm not so sure. Uh, you got to tip it. And there's, there's issues. <laughs> I don't like the way that uh, yeah. it has to collapse right. Um, Latch is going to have an issue with that two pin. It just ripped off the spot. He's done that a few times. Very powerful ball. 
Ooh. Uh, 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 I direct pins. It has issues. Um, the, the issues were with the nine pin back there. Good sticks for Latch. He's got a nine. 93 through eight. Flatwood sometimes can be a bother, but DeLuca pins out for 10. He's still only left two pins standing. With those three marks, Latch has two marks, including a strike and a spare. Back to back. Okay, but the marks are now down to, well, you know, there's two strikes on the board for Central and yeah. one's a double strike. <laughs> yeah. And uh, there are three spares on the board for Millis, and you got to say <laughs> the marks are not in their favor. <laughs> Therefore, Marks and it's a 20 pin lead still for Central 2. Sean yep. McDonald. We're going to start seeing some of them filled though. And it really does depend on that Tim Douglas fill ball. Is the consistency back? We're going to find out very soon. McDonald's got a chance. Despite the head pin miss, 1 2. Ooh, sabered through like the champagne bottle. Takes out the. Jimmy Keefe takes out the 2 5 and 8. For a three fill. Got the outside. Yes! Holy Actually, bro. that two pin tripped out from behind. Three, no, four straight for Keith. McDonald pins out 10. 10 in the box, 81 through 7. Based on the subtitles, I think some of the bowling commentary is carrying through onto our audio. I love it. Nickel and dime. Thank you, AI, for doing that. We don't have, to anyone, have anyone typing for us. In the words of Ken Jennings, I, for one, welcome our new robot overlords. That was an eight fill for Keith. It's a good one again. He's got a chance at the 110. But this time, McDonald's got a spare to the fire at him. Can Keith respond? Got the head pin, it's five in a row. Oh, welcome back, Jimmy Keefe. It just seemed like a matter of time. I mean, he bowls a 370 in the once a month last uh, last edition of it. It just seemed like a matter of time before he would find his groove on these lanes here in Millis, Massachusetts. Yeah, he has six spares in his last nine boxes going back to the first string. Scott Douglas. No pins left standing. This will challenge that though. It's three and one split. Uh, Dennis O'Dowd. Green can say the same thing, by the way. Oh, yeah. P imperfect. O'Dowd in the fill. Uh-oh. Uh, another six. Deja vu. All right. Well, leads down to three. Double strike and a, a, a single strike and a spare for Central. Oh, this goes. Two, four, six, seven. O'Dowd okay. finds a way. They say the, those odds don't look great, but and these these spares are helping enormously. By the way, Scott Douglas ripped that split apart for an out, so he's still perfect. 93 through 7. We're just checking, but yeah, nobody else can say that right now. Diamond, left side. Perfect. Mm hmm That's right. Down to Phil. Put a good shot. Can he put another one here? Oh. Yes, he can. Oh. It's nine. Almost on the sweep across. The six still stands. 101 through seven. Those dastardly diamonds, one and four. To take out the four. Scott Douglas had a 102 last string. Oh, oh, oh. And the eight pin was hit. He's, you were hit. Get he over. Kicked it in the gluteus maximus. <laughs> it didn't fall. Hit you. Good balance. Odoud. Nope. Grimace as he let it go. Grimace is purple. <laughs> that's right. Rubble. Oh, well, that's a hamburger. Right? Thank you for putting that image in my head. <laughs> Scott Douglas still pin perfect. That's 10, 103 through 8. Odoud takes 9, 110. And now, a moment we've been waiting for. Oh. oh. 103 and 110 is right. Scroll yeah. it down, and there you there see you it, are. folks. Oh. oh. There you, there you, there, there, there you there, see there it, you folks. See it? Yes. <laughs> and 
Dennis Green's on mark, too. Timmy Douglas. Monster moment. This one will count three times. Has he found the range? Mm. Not quite, but he's got a good count on it. He did put the hurt on the three pin, though. Attack on six more. This one. Phil is seven for Green. He's got 90 through seven. Remember, he's working pin perfect. 90 through six, rather. Working pin perfect. Oh. Douglas grabs more sticks. Nine on that one. It is 80 through six. All right. Green was trying to get the wood to go. 81. Uh, yeah, it's 90. He's at, it's 90. It's 90. He's at 90. Right. I told myself I would six. never. I failed at double strike math. Unbelievable. And 100. I'll call Bentley. I'll call Bentley University and tell them they can have their math sciences right. degree back. And with that 10, he's at a hun He's now at 100. In the seventh. Green for his part. Ended up with an eight. He's at 98. And that puts the lead just five for Central, too. That's not so bad. Well, at least they've got marks to fill. It, it, yeah, it's two, five plus three balls, basically. Number, two from the strike. Number four. Hey, Dennis okay. Green. Subtract one of those balls. Five plus, plus the strike now. Douglas, oh, almost ran it down. Tougher is right to left ball. Had to really get on the other side of that pin. Almost found a way. That's nine. 109. All right, so he leads by one, but bonus ball's coming for Dennis Green. He's in that matchup, and in the match, we're going to switch back to this view. You'll see... It's 499 to 495. Central two with the lead and two marks on the board to 495 and one mark on the board for Millis. That's really four pins plus a ball. Esdale strikes. That is what they needed. Dan Esdale has been taking a bit of a nap lately. I saw <laughs> him put the, the black towel on his head and watch out when he puts the towel on his head. He gets serious. He cares, but you got to do what you got to do to focus the mind. Winniar's second Phil ball. seven. Yep. On the strike. He got it. Yes, he did. Spare on strike for Winniar's. Former Park Place Lanes bowler. Pity I never got the chance to go there. Esdale. Looked right Down up his hand. Middle. Carved back in. Doesn't double, but good chance. 6 10. Winnie R's. His He's fill. Right. Crossed over. Er, no, no, that's no. He pulls right to left. What am I talking about? Goodbye. Tailed away. Spare on the strike. One hundred five and a ball. That's a twenty box. In the ninth. Twenty stack up quick, but they almost seem necessary in a fast house like this. Twenty yards. Boy, pin that. Two right. accurate shots. Yeah, that's right. He didn't didn't fill. He, he's at one twenty eight yep. with that five fill. Mm -hmm. And the lead, it's 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 virtually tied right now. And we'll see it after this. Seven. Yeah. Okay. One thirty five. His lowest box of the string, but again, it's between that, he's at three hundred five for the pair. He is. So hey. probable four hundred already. Oh, boy, what a finish. <laughs> this Another fill is high. How about 40 in the last two for Esdale? Ooh. Whoa. 115 to bring him up to 236. And that, that is a lead change. It's now Millis by four. Strike for Green and a spare for McDonald. Those are the only marks on the board. We're going to move to the second bowlers here. Frank DeLuca 
Uh, yeah, Keith has a spare. That's right. Yep. Uh, Keith. Keith. Spares. Yep. Oh, oh, cool. That's. Yeah, that's, not that's right. Oh, otherwise. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Sorry, it's up there. I'm not. I'm just missing it. Oh boy. Oh boy. It looked like it was going to be a chaotic leave. Fist pump moment again. A seven pin for Deluca. Now look, look at this. He's got. He's going to have to push that one through hot hit, by hitting the pin high. By high, we mean where the face is out there near the plate. Not to be confused with Frank face. It's Frank DeLuca. Yep, he hit it a little bit low. Too bad. That, that, that ball was headed right for the seven pin. Couldn't take it. Yeah, there was a chance that, that would have shifted yeah. it, especially with the wood back there. It could have easily, the ball could have bounced off the wall and hit the seven, but it didn't. Friendly reminder that the wood does not make this game easier. Only, well, sometimes it does. I mean, you know, sometimes. The pro average, just... Uh, I don't like to just say things without backing them up. Pro average on head pins, as we've seen, is 70% when they're naked. And the overall pro average on nine drops in my studies is 78% because there's wood quite frequently. So anyway. Cool. Um, yeah, cool. If you like numbers. I like numbers. Numbers, These, are, numbers a bunch are fun. Of numbers. There's so many numbers in this game. It is so cool. 101 for Lash as he gets an eight. Numbers, Bob, numbers. Yeah, let me stop talking. Put your numbers <laughs> on the board. Put your numbers on the board. That's what people don't want to hear you talk about numbers. They want to hear, they want to see the numbers. The Earth is about 93 million miles from the sun. Mm -hmm. But it varies by uh, several million miles because it's an ellipse. <laughs> and it's closest in the winter just because you live in the northern hemisphere. Extra mark for Millis. The interesting things are all complicated. Box 10, check mark. I look really old, but I'm just backdated, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. 2-4 for Latch. I should probably put them. But this is a check mark for DeLuca. It's right out of the hand. Out. Latch. No. Still a little breathing room for Millis with the five pin lead. Yeah, these and three spot marks are going to be so yep. interesting in a second. Oh. That's, a, that's an eight. That'll be a 116 for Frank Face. And 111 for Steven Latch. So two string totals. Uh, Steve Latch is on to 235. Frank DeLuca. 257. 257. Yeah, that 141. Oh, here's, yeah, you're looking at it, too. Yep, here's Jimmy Keefe coming in on the right side. This is a good miss. Leads the 124 and gets seven on the fill. McDonald also a good miss here. He's got eight, nine. And that drops on the spare. Gain in the gain in the uh, pair. Keeps still ahead in the comparison, but McDonald has a chance. One pin lead for Millis. Look moment. at this wood here. Uh, there's a piece in front that's really diagonal. Let's yeah. see if he dodges it all together. It's three middle pieces. Goes to the left oh. side wood and yeah. gets it. Yeah, he went left, right. That was smart, a smart play. Right, right. He went left, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's 10 for Keith, and he's up to 120. Good crowd here on Facebook and YouTube. All right, a one pin lead for Millis. Ball coming up though from McDonald right here. I know I say it often, but we really are grateful for all you folks. Thank you very much for taking some time out of your evening on this Friday night or whenever you may be watching on demand on okay. YouTube. Seven in that field. Those were big seven pins. Objects in the mirror appear closer. Yeah. Then they may appear. I don't, I don't well, know why that came into my mind. But it, it, well, passenger, it's a, it, passenger yeah. side leave doesn't that, go. How about oh, this one? Oh, no. no. I was going to say, that seven is no bigger than a seven in the first yeah. box. But it just appears yeah. bigger when it's at the end. You, you know, take the, the spare smudge end. off McDonald's side. Right. Now it's 117 through nine straight yep. up. And a nine box for Jimmy Keefe with a 129. 
McDonald to stick more for 126. Good clap from uh, his teammates. That was big for Jimmy Keefe after that 90. All right, 239 Two. for McDonald and how does uh, 221 now. That's it for Jimmy Keefe. Silly me trying to actually do the math. Well, you know, just look on the board <laughs> to your left. No, it's good we to have, check it. It's good to check. We have technology. All right. We'll show it, we'll show it to the viewers at home after the string is over, the right. two-string total. Scott Douglas still on a pin-perfect string. Dennis Green okay. lost it in box By the seven. way, the, the lead is six now for Central. Two. Six. Neither of these bowlers on a fill. Yep. Boy, it's a virtual tie at this point. Scott Douglas, outpost. Four horsemen in a 10 pin. Dowd oh, gets down. it. He yes. got it. Perfect pocket. I prematurely called it, but that was a perfect ball. It was. It should have gone, and it did. Douglas. Will a corner carry? Boy, that took a hike. It will not drop. Are those big pins? Pound, just They're pretty Are they? thin, honestly. It's kind of the whole thing. Yeah. Douglas pins again. So it's it's on. It's on. 113. Is he still perfect? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, oh. Is that what you're saying it's on? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm decoding what you're saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Keep going. Okay, seven. Yeah, seven. He'll be thrilled with that. Scott Douglas. Oh, this should go go, and Bagley could go as one. Lead change, one pin lead for Millis now. Well, he's <laughs> keeps swinging back and forth. Vital leaves now. Side saddle triangle. Oh no! And it breaks apart on O'Dowd. Too yeah. bad. The ball has to has to get inside and ricochet back to the five on those. It's tough. Douglas. Yes, yes! it's a perfect string. One twenty-three in a ball. All the pins knocked down that he saw. Apart from this 11th rack, we'll see. Yeah, nine box nine. for O'Dowd, 136 for a two-string total of 255. Now, Brendan was not perfect, but he's going to beat the guy that was perfect. Now, that, that doesn't make sense to a lot of people. Well, 10 boxes are only worth 10. That's so kind of the simple way to put it. Maybe perfect is a little bit of an exaggerated yeah. term. It's, it's always, it's always about, the old chestnut. 300 is mathematically, yeah. but not practically possible. Yeah, it's divine or it's it's inspired, yeah. but it's not perfect. It's quite cool. Well, thankfully, it doesn't have to pin this one out. It's actually a pretty good leave, all told. Oh, yeah, How about the a, seven pin? Not quite. Those are really big pins. <laughs> it's eight. It's 131. Hey, you scoff, but let's take a look at how that affects it. That actually is the lead right yeah, now. Yeah, you know, they're just okay, Dennis Green, you have been raking as anchor right now. Nice. Like Green, okay, we're down to we're down to the last two boxes yeah. here. Green, who is already and on four hundred pace. So if he fills with eight and a half, he'll be a half pin ahead. If that, which, you know, that's the average. Eight point three, I think, is the average, right? So if he gets all right, let's see. And, all right, and here in Millis, like you said, it's mix. <laughs> like you suggested, it seems like you get bigger mm -hmm. fills, but they're not. Okay, Douglas rips the three pin and wipes out the mini rack on the right. Okay, that's yeah. going to be eight. So we're tied, my friends. We are tied. Bending duel now. Ah, considering he got that Western shootout scene on the oh. Central Two shirts. Okay, both bowlers open in the ninth. And the pinning duel is going to go Douglas's way here for a second. Okay. Eight bucks. Nothing on Mark can't repair. So you want to be an anchor bowler. Boom. Ten. 119 for Tim Douglas. At the highest level, this is in, and, and Timmy has not been in that anchor slot. So a two pin lead. Down to box 10, Dennis Green, four horsemen. Can he okay. show Timmy yep. how? Not bad, it's, it's, it's the cross version for him though. He, he throws a right to left ball, he's gonna come in across it. This misses, but it's a big. Yeah. Now that was, that was off the that was off the two pin, wasn't it? Has to be careful with this wood. Green. It's got to go. No, it doesn't go. It comes back. Or oh, it got wood. It hit wood. It was coming back. And the, if the middle had hit it, and I think the middle would have hit it, I think it was gone. 
Yep. Oh, Douglas wow. just has to not lose by three, so he can't he, actually. He has to get one of these pins to tie or, and, and two of these to pins to, to win, right? And he's That's got two it. balls. So smash some wood. Yeah, play the wood. Smash the wood. Throw your 43-mile-an-hour pitch if you got one. And I think he's got, he got a stick. That okay. guarantees a tie. Guarantees a well, yeah, and this one has to go. It won't go. So that will – that means Central 2 will take a 4 nothing lead. Yes, it did. It came down to that. Tim may not know. He's really putting a lot of thought into this ball. I don't blame him for staying in the zone at least. Yep. He grabs the stick anyway, 128. And that was going to be a 133 for Green. Yeah, 631 to 629. That's great bowling. Oh, my goodness. And that – yeah. Uh, and Six. two pins wow. decides it. And let, let me uh, switch over to camera two here, or scoreboard two. Those are the uh, the high the high string there in string two. Actually, is going to be the 136 from Bl Br Brendan O'Dowd. 135 for Chris Winniars after his 170 in, game, in string one. He's up to 305. After that, Dennis Green, 133. Let's show the two string total. I have him. Get it on that same view here. And your two string totals. You see Winniar is getting ready to throw his first ball in the third string. I'm going to leave those up just for a minute while you watch Chris Winniar get things underway. Winniar is already over 300. Good grief. Speaking of good grief, here's that. Setback. Good grief might be a good name for something. <laughs> uh, good, that, that could be the good grief leave there. My goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Good grief. Six, seven, eight, ten. Anytime you get, you have, it's, it's not even a split. It's a three-way split. And especially if you've got no wood, you're like, good grief. Yeah, usually you get that piece of wood that, like, sits in front of the 6-10. It kind of went a different way yeah. this time. I mean, the I think it, the 5 seven, ten is like that for me. I'm like, good grief. <laughs> and other words sometimes come to mind. Third ball's coming up. All Tough right. pinning duel. I mean... You saw how much it mattered at the end, but who knows how much it'll matter here. So it's only a nine for Winniars and only a nine for Esdale, but who knows? Maybe we'll be thinking about those shots later. You just never know which ball is going to be the critical one. That's why we watch every frame. Candlepin Bowling Network on Facebook and YouTube. I'm Greg Guyard. that's Bob Lee. Hi. Paul Grant is away in Maine. Covering a big tournament up there. All right, we're going to get a reset on lane 21. I was going to drop this. I was going to consult with you and Paul and uh, some of the other luminaries of the Canavan Bowling Network. We're going to be changing our subscription status sometime very soon. We're not going to require a subscription for any show. Any shows. We, we like to We pride ourselves on the fact that everything's free, but we're going to need to start collecting some money um, for the expenses that our announcers, especially Paul Grant, who's put 15,000 miles on his car, yeah. Um, you know, give, giving away his time for, for this and for Candlepins for Cancer. Um, you know, for the good or the, you know, and, and he's not everyone's cup of tea, but he is he is a un unbelievable supporter of the game, and I really appreciate it. And I'd like to see us switch to a voluntary subscription basis um, for people that want to support the network. I mean, and, we uh, can talk about it later, but the Patreon yeah. is one way that you can, you know, keep all the content free because... Mm -hmm. As long as, you know, nothing changes for no, our folks out there. We can do it through YouTube. I've, I've, I've investigated it, and uh, okay. there are a couple things available to us, and uh, we could probably do it through Facebook, but it's a lot easier yeah. through YouTube. Um, they'll be coming out. We're going to be – oh, how about that piece? Chester Cove leave goes. <laughs> the four and two, the pretty one it goes. Bear. Esdale. Doesn't go, so Winnie Arzus Mark will – He continues to romp. Take first serve, yep. And roll. And yep. stomp. And Winniars needed that extra mark to be darn sure of his 400, which is now highly probable at this point. Esdale 9. I mean, again, Ryan's last place in the standings, but you've seen it here. There's really no quit in their game. Say what you will, the other guys made some more shots, but this is quality on both sides. Yeah, I'm glad they, they, sh they showed up like this. This is, this is uh, a real event here. Dennis Green could also have a 400. He's got to work for it. But he has a chance. With a 126, he'd be there. First Steve Latch with his 1-9-10.
Frank DeLuca. Head pin, hay bale, the cluster of five. This is when it gets tougher. Hey, hey. Oh, bounce it off the wall, touched the nine, and, and it just stood still. It wiggled and then said, no, more than that, DeLuca. Big spare there. Or, oh, is it a big spare? It's a little spare here, because later it'll be a big spare, right? Sure. It's a, so, so a little spare in the first, big spares in the ten. It's a good spare. Ten yeah, box slash. I got I can figure out how to use cliches better without thinking about them. <laughs> Alas, folks, he has too high brow. Latch. <laughs> Just wide of the head. It hasn't occurred to you. We are not professional announcers. Although you, sir, you, sir, should be. And I think um, the Olympic caliber of, of enunciation and calibration on, on, on Paul Graham puts him up there with the great professional announcers as well. Um, anyway, that, that, that is a 10 for Latch. Seven for DeLuca. Latch spares. Luca takes out the two. So that extra mark for Central two, so a little advantage is early, might see them through again. So plenty of boxes. And that'll be a nine. He's at 26. Good pace going here. Five pin lead for Millis in the early going, but two marks on the board. Facing Central. Jim Keefe, Jason. Sean McDonald. Sean being steady with that 239, that's good going. All right, that was going to be a half Worcester plus the five, and then three pins fell out of the, or two pins fell out of the right side as well. Could go. Mm, got, nestled up to it, didn't I it? I think he got something to bounce off the curtain back there. Keith, he's put a pin on this one, but he just sent the pin behind. These two had a had a good match in the in the second string. One twenty nine to one twenty six. Keith in this matchup, coming back big time from his first time woes, first string woes. Ten for McDonald. Nine for Jimmy Keith. All right, that's all right. Cluster of yeah. four this time. The lambda. I remember two, four, seven, and eight for McDonald. Slim advantage you see, of course, for Ryan's, but you see those two extra marks up the yellow smudges between total and game. So those are the two extra spares. Ten pin didn't come set for Keith Hillary Rack. Just one mark on the board for Millis, that Frank DeLuca's spare in the first. That one's already been filled. All right, this is the lead that doesn't go, the Chester Cove. Okay. Hey. Yes. He sm smashed the, the triplet and yeah, used the wall. McDonald ran down the three first. Hey, hey. Yep. It does go. Yep. Got a, wood, got a piece of wood in between the four and seven. They both fell. Never goes. It's the second time we've seen it tonight. Scott Douglas and Brendan O'Dowd. Brendan O'Dowd having a great evening, 255 through two. Scott Douglas, 233 through two. Rich Lamoni and Brian Fournier. Central two and Ryan's looking on. Douglas crossovers leave Kings five and dime. Douglas throwing 36 out of his hand, 33.5. Oops, one, six, eight, at ten, the, at the actually. Head. Interesting. Oh, Dowd's now got the one, eight, ten with some interesting wood. Scott misses. Everybody on Central two thought a little more to the right, and that would have taken it. Instant reaction. Oh, Dowd. Oh, great. Spilled the head pin the wrong way. Yep. Needed a, a direct hit on that to have a chance. All right, here's, here's some interesting wood for uh, Brendan O'Dowd. 
Got to have to poke it in the eye, I think. Nine box for Scott Douglas. So it's his per first okay. imperfect frame in an eternity. Wow. O'Dowd 10. Actually, yeah, Scott Douglas actually has had 13 straight perfect frames until that one. He had a nine box, string one, box seven. Simply unreal. He's got four to get here, the one, two, eight, and ten. O'Dowd. Good Sweetness. hit. Six. Okay. Double wood. So uh, maybe a, a Twix bar sitting, <laughs> sitting there out there in front of the six pin, right? Or is that a nine? That's a nine in the back. That's the back pin. It's got to go left Twix or right Twix. What are you going to do? Left Twix? Let's see. Break oh, me off a right piece. Wait a second. I've, <laughs> I've got my slogans backwards, but O'Dowd's got his spare. Douglas has an eight. All right, a five pin lead for Millis overall. Yeah. Now the marks are three to two. Yeah. Ryan's Millis had an eight nothing victory last week against Team Lafayette. Remember Corrado Pony with that 380. You know, they've had Chris Parkinson substitute, and he's a house bowler out of here in Ryan's. I love Chris. Chris Parkinson will be joining me for the doubles tournament upcoming uh, that Joshua yeah. Daly is uh, sponsoring. Yeah. The Parkinson's average in the Friday Night Pro League when substituting 124 That's across his Wednesday five night. Matches. That's his Wednesday night league average, too. He's he's He has arrived. Yeah, if he had the time, <laughs> Millis would become better, like, instantly, or whoever scooped him. He doesn't like to travel. Eh. He lives down in Blackstone. That's it's fair. Tough. It's tough. He, you know, he's, he's as far away as, as Winniard is yeah. north. He's as far south. With all of us groveling about mileage, ooh, Green can't get yep. it to go. Okay. Did that just go for Tim? Wait, no. No. Oh. If it, it fell late. It, 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 yeah. It, it fell late when we were talking. And that's a 10 for Green. So, but that's a spare. I mean, we, they're correcting the board up there. We'll put it up on here. That's, this is true. I was not paying attention. You put your head down for one moment. Yeah. You never know. I'll, I did see Tim Douglas turn around and give that, like, yeah. what, me, huh, who? <laughs> like, yeah. I don't believe what I just saw. And I looked back, and there were no pins standing. Uh, there was a clip of, I think it was Bill O'Neill. Even in big ball game, it happens, too, sometimes, but rarely. The reset comes down so quickly in 10-pin. What? It's like sometimes the, sometimes the, the sweeper just yeah. is down before you've... Before the ball hits the back yeah. of the curtain. If you're not careful, the robot overlords get your pins and just yank them up like, those are mine, thank you. <laughs> All right, what is going on here? That's a, that's a mini a mini Greek church uh, for Dennis and yeah. a six fill. Yeah, it's three, four, five, six, seven. Those pins are only consecutive wait, wait. numerically. No, I'm... All right, I, 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 put the, I put the spare up on the wrong side. Yeah. It's Douglas with the spare. That's a 16. That's right. Green close on that. Almost converted that... Mini church. Eight for Tim Douglas, 24 through two. Green, 10. Right, Again, a lot of pin. A lot of perfect 10s for Green. All right, and. Uh, you know, interestingly, Green actually was pin perfect for a huge span of boxes as well. He was, had a nine box in the very first box and then nine perfect frames after that. And then he had six more, so he actually had 15 straight perfect frames, but across strings, Dennis Green. Ten or better. All right. Um, hey, it's time to move to the top of the order. The lead is one for Millis on my board. I, I, don't, I don't think we got the right score, though. I think we got, we got a score correction here. Uh, add one. Give Brendan O'Dowd one of Scotty Douglas's pins. The That's what Okay, so I'll watch this. So Scotty Douglas. Four and two this again for Esdale, the Chester Cove special. One, two, seven, and eight for Winniars. His fill is six, and he ends up with 25 through two. Esdale needs a third yes. ball in this. So Scotty's only at 17 then. All right. Mm -hmm. um, is this right? Yeah. Should be good now. Uh, give Winniars six more for that fill, and then let's watch that one, two, seven, eight. And watch it go for back-to-back -back marks. Six for Esdale. 24 through two. Esdale doing fine with a 236. 
It's gone as high as 374 this season. The only 400 for Central 2 he belongs to Steve Latch. He had a 406. All right, that's Dale getting back on track. We saw it a little bit at the uh, tail end of string two. We threw 40 in the ninth and 10th. He's there. Winnie Arts. By what? my goodness, he nearly what? spilled another backdoor strike. This is guaranteeing a 400 for him. But I know he, he has like a beautiful grace and release to his delivery, but goodness gracious, it's almost the umpteenth time he's done that. Umpteenth? Is it is umpteenth? That come after 19? <laughs> I always wondered what come. You know, maybe in base 24, it would be the, the umpteenth would be the. Oh no, never mind. People don't like it when you talk about numbers, like we said. Our commentary is modular. We just kind of go with it. Four, oh, short You're pin four me. for Esdale. You're kidding me. Played it on the outside if you want to quibble, but oh, dear. This is why we need Paul Grant here to balance us. <laughs> Unreal. Put, it on a, put, it on, put, it, put us on a seesaw. <laughs> Perfect shot. What do you show for it? Ten box for Winnie R's. 54. And uh, Esdale with a nine is at 33. And we're up to our... Uh, is he not? Did he still get a ball? Oh, Winniars with a spare. Sorry. Yeah. That, you. And that's why he still had a ball. They do take turns. The ball triggering is disabled, so... Esdale throws one down. Finally hit the seven pin, raises his hand in victory. But that was a nine, and uh, they're going to have to. Hmm? Mm -hmm. They, they got it. We got it. They got it. The lead is 17 now for Central 2. And the, uh, Don't worry, Sarah. We see your comments. Hopefully, it's, the comment box has been broken <laughs> for everyone else. All right. Hello, Big Cap. Uh, yes, sour cream does belong on tacos. Your okay. comment is invalid. Sorry, they're, they're saying 34. So that was a 10 then. Fresdale. But either way, thank you so much for leaving all your feedback in chat and comments. All right. Frank DeLuca, not a fisherman, but he visits the ocean. Or he may, may be a fisherman. I just I like walks on the beach, I guess. Walk on the beach. Takes out the six, eight, and nine. Gets his feet wet there. Latch, we're on position two, by the way. That's the that's a triangle. Number three. Oh, oh outside on it. Usually he's gotten a few others. Seven on that fill though. The marks are fast and furious in the early going, but this game does not get easier as you go. Deluca has an eight. Latch has 10. Still, though, already the marks are 6-3 to three right now for Central 2. So they're building a sizable advantage at the moment. 25 pins, you see it on your screen. 39 overall in total. Two match points for the string, two for total. Central 2 would love to get an 8-0 because then that would force Academy 3 to get some points. It would put them right up there in the thicket and possibly wow. tie them for 5th. Half Worcester plus the it's the four, three the eight. three four eight nine. Yeah. That's just a setback. Yeah. Three four eight nine sounds easier than it is though. It's like, ugh. this is like this, this is yeah. good grief. Yeah, it doesn't really roll off the tongue, does it? it just hits the front though of that. Deluca takes go. a roll though. He spilled the three pin. Take three out of four, not bad at all. Hey. That's gone. That's at least the wood was nicely positioned for Latch, and a good shot was available for him, and he took advantage. And he'll sit on another mark. DeLuca 9, 43 through 4. Central 2 off to the early advantage. Okay, Sean McDonald and Jimmy Keefe both on marks. Yep. Spares. Remember, Jim Keefe had a 129 previous after the 92 start, so he is trending very much in the right direction. He's got a mark here. Trying to put his team back in it. McDonald. Has a 19-pin lead over the, in the pairing so far today. 
Off scores of 113 and 126. Split. Okay. Split for Keefe and four horsemen for McDonald. Keefe tries, six, seven, ten. This one's going to roll across, and he's got this. Incredible spare. Wow, dude. <laughs> All right, and McDonald open, takes nine for 35. <coughs> After the fill. He was at 26 with a six fill. Okay, Keith grabs four more. Got so hyped up about that spare fill, I almost killed myself. Oh. <laughs> that was a, sorry. It was a two and one split. I mean, I, I couldn't not. That's six, six, seven, ten. Do you need water? Maybe a little. <laughs> McDonald gets the piece of wood to roll it to the seven pin. Third try, ball's coming up for each. I'm trying not to overreact to the fact that you just threw your papers all over the place. Seven for Jimmy Keith. He's at 47. McDonald with a 10, gets himself up to 45. Yeah, I'm not terribly coordinated. That's why I commentate and they bowl. Lucky us, we have the front row seats to watch the best of the best. All right, Brendan O'Dowd. Test, test. There we on go. a spare. <laughs> The best of the best. Yeah, they, he, heard, he heard you. They're easy. And he's the best of the best yes. of the best. Yeah. And that was the best for the best of the best. How about another 20 box? This one from Brennan O'Dowd. Strike on spare. 30 through two. Scott Douglas at the Caleri right side. Four horsemen in an eight pin. Tightens things up a bit. Third ball coming up. After all those perfect frames, looking for some pins here. That's right. They, Millis, for the moment, has the lead. I mean, Scotty's going to get a couple. Yeah. Yep, ran it down nicely. Six becomes nine. 26. So Brendan O'Dowd with a strike on spare. Significant here. Ryan's was looking for that spark to start closing the margin. Central 2 does have that extra mark to go with their dozen pin advantage. Mm -hmm. Well, how, f how high will this fill go? Oh, down. Goodbye. Strike fill. It's a good one. Nope. That was not a, a double, even though this wood's going to jump the pin plate. Doesn't carry it. Scott Douglas, though, gets a strike. Oh. Now, that was a big strike. That was a strike of normal size. Oh, down. Please don't make the 6-7. I don't know if my respiratory system can take it. Here it is. Boom. Hits the wood. And... It went off the turntable in the back that collects the pin, so it was sweeping it away, unfortunately. The fill is 9, 49 through 3. And 9, 58 through 4. Good going here for Brendan, who's on 255. If he gets a 1 under 45, All right, I not out of the question. Check my scores, and it's a four-pin lead for Central. It was in the 20s not long ago. Yep. Well, yep. all those extra marks, though, to be fair. Right. No including marks, one, no including marks one here. Including one just now for Scott Douglas. Right. No marks here that in the uh, anchor slot for the moment. Yeah. Wow. I like that. Greens. I like it when he, he, get, he gets that full extension and, and then brings it across instead of, instead of swinging it across. That, that Trying to bring a little extra. Tim Douglas has a strike. Bam. Nine in the pit. 245 is good going. I thought his, the concerns about his ability were over. I think he's back. He says he's not hurting that badly, but it, it showed his accuracy was down a lot in that match against Collins. And it, and it was because he couldn't he couldn't put pressure on those on those fingers. His speed is back up, so it's obvious to me that he 
it, it's not bothering him the way it was. Yeah. So. Those, pin, those pin setter machines are a uh, peril. I mean, Autumn Mowry out of Demanda's Bowling Center, one of the most uh, publicized candle pin bowling lanes after the fact that oh. she's sole proprietor and sole everything up there in Ellsworth, Maine. Oh, my Look goodness. at this mix. It's the Millis 8 and almost and that could have been a double. Strike. Millis 9. Ouch. And still... Yeah, he's still in the bonus. He's got another another look at looking for a twenty bucks. Yeah, but point being, Autumn Maurer is the only one who can work on those pin setter machines because it's so dangerous. She says insurance oh. won't cover anyone else. Wow. So, all right. The that, occupational hazards Timmy encountered are perfectly understandable. That's bears on strike. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. And All right, Dennis just... Yeah, it's a four box, isn't it? It's a four box. Is it a four? Yeah, it's four. Two and two. Two plus two is four. So after four, we see it here. 33 through four. 21 pins and a bunch of marks for Central 2 in the early going. Remember, Ryans can stack marks at the end. We saw all those 20 boxes from Esdale and Dennis Green going off at the end there. O'Dowd at the late strike. Everybody got in on the act at the end. Yeah. And it made it exciting. It was single digits a minute ago, and now it's yeah. 21 plus four fills, including five balls. But they have yeah. to be filled. There's still scope for this to go 4-4. Four, four. One of the least common outcomes. In fact, there are three teams that only have one, and Ryan Millis is one of them. That's a strike for Esdale, okay. speaking of going off late. When he ours is fill is eight. He's got wood in the middle there. 7-10. Right side of the wood on the 10-pin, I guess? Yeah, I think so. You can even you can Try even and railroad him. it across. He split him. He got split it him. across. Mm. It, it was a slim chance, but it was a be, it was not no chance. Everything's a spare lead. And ten. Everything's a ten lead as well. Think about it. So strike on the board for Esdale. Double strike would be a big deal here. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, third string of three, by the way. I just noticed. Oh, sorry about that. There we go. Winnie ours now. Already well into the 400s here. They're probably into the 420s. Another 7-10 split. Good grief. 7-10. Heavens above. Uh-oh. Other interjections of choice. As they'll need another ball in this strike. All right, I, I am growing to believe that you really have to hit the head pin on the second ball when you get that half Worcester, that it is not adequate to go over and sweep the opposite side, you know, the opposite three pin or the two pin in this case. That is what I'm yes, talking about. Yes, good count, no spare. The fills nine. Just so often you end up with like three-way splits when you when you miss it, and, and it's just like it, it is a disaster. This is the way to get out of that disaster, yep. and that nine nine fill helps. Ten box for Winniars, eighty-two through six to pile onto his already amazing series. Ten for Esdale, sixty-three. He's three over his box. Winniars already 22 yeah. over. Chris Winniars came into this with a high series of 398 this season. This is going to torch that. Unless he walks out the front door right now. Steve Latch. 3-5. The fill is eight. Again, solid and steady for the former Met Team Metro Bowl bowler. DeLuca, again, outstretched arms pleading with the pins. He's got oh, five. No. Oh, okay. A Latch could have had a higher series. I tell you, he's gotten a little luckless with some of his uh, punch outs. So when I said earlier that I, I think he, throw, he throws a ball reminiscent of Tim Jalbert, because he, he throws with a, his, his arm goes right to left, but then he throws it left with left to right spin. Yeah. 
I mean, eventually gets over to the left side of where he's throwing, so there you go. That's the backup ball in effect. DeLuca pins out. That's 10. Good out on the third ball. The most, I don't, I think most people with a backup ball are throwing from the left side. You know, like the classic to me, Jeremy Seaholm ball comes from the left side and goes left to right. Yeah. You know, he's, he's throwing right to left with a left to right ball. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> I think it causes extra damage. Here. Yeah. Actually, his foot is, ends up on the left side of the lane as he delivers it. He's got the 278. But he raises the ball way up to the right, and his, his arm is coming to right to left. Yeah. Deluca, Ooh, gone man. strike. Take out your kaboom box? Yes, please. All right. I think Drew Steele for that one. 278. Latch tried to leverage the wood. And then we should fix the scoreboard view to the camera one. Oh, yeah. Let's do that. Whoosh. Get a good view of that arm swing there. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I'm talking you know, about an arm that was behind the scoreboard. It's pretty the, great out of that. It, it's pretty great, pretty great, pretty good. 73. 73 through 6. Were those big pins too? <laughs> They're all big pins. Hang on, did I violate my three times quota? Wait a minute. What's going on here? <laughs> those pins are exactly the same size as all the other pins. Naturally. I mean, but for marks and shavings and dings. <laughs> <laughs> Six taken out for uh, that's oh, Keith, of course. Yep, and we'll move up to them. If I'd gone by the face rather than the names, it would have been easier. This can go one, three, six, oh, seven. Boy, he, I love the way he hit it thin, but it, the ball yeah. didn't uh, didn't ricochet quite as much as you needed it, and then. You got rid of the three. Ooh, that's, oh, that's those are big pins, Bob. That's a good third out. Third ball out. Ten box apiece for McDonald with that great shot. And Keefe, who ran down those three well and then picks the corner. Those pins are exactly the same size as all the other pins. <laughs> but you never know which pins are going to matter. They add up, though. I laugh, but you really don't know. This, this one again. The DC special. Boom. Oh. Uh-oh. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, this could mix that, that went from an uh-oh to all oh, right. Oh, no, no. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, fast. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Keith with a six pin. All right. Ooh. Rang around the four pin, McDonald. Yeah, that was, that was, a, that was the ball you want. This planks right in so front of So is this, speaking of all you want. You. Nice. Third mark. 67 through six. McDonald will stick with nine. He's having a fine string, 64 through six. On to the Douglas brothers, both on marks. Scott, Scott Douglas first, and Brendan O'Dowd. All right. Who's had the doubles? Who's had, who's had the double strike so far? Timmy and... Tim Douglas has and uh, Winniars. Winnie Winnie right, in that 170? Yep. Both from Central, two. That was key against Hingham when Sean McDonald got a double strike on route to a 144. That helped take some match points away during a broadcast we had over there at Central Park Lanes in East Boston. Douglas, okay. still filling. Ooh, that that's six. That wasn't the one he was aiming for. It's a 42. No doubt has got the 137. This goes. Just a board to the right of the head pin. Good out. Yep. Nine is fine. 51 at the half. Odoud. Is nine. Is his nine as equally fine? Yeah. According to the opinion of mine. 67 half. That, that was uh, my uh, old teammates out of Norwood Sports Center that were telling me that, actually. Back when I was atrocious, and not just because the pins are tough to move at Norwood. Big strike! That's a a strike of any other size. That's a Morse code double. No, I'm trying to think. What's it called? You know, ta 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 No, no. Okay, I'm I'm lost. Sixty-one in the sixth, and that 
Sorry, I'll stop yep, now. Yep. So, Brendan on a spare leave here. This is a uh, two pinner. Left. Ooh, it's gone. Beautiful. He needed that. Got on the outside of it. I mean, it's his third mark. I don't know if he really needed it. He didn't need it, like, existentially, but it, it was. <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 you know, his 400 pace is there, though. Oh, really, Brendan? I mean, or, or he needs mean? a 145. It's, okay. It takes some doing, but it's possible. Yeah, he's 17 over. He needs to pick up 28 yep. in the next four boxes. All right. Anchor bowlers. Tim Douglas. 28 plus. Dennis Green. The 40 for the spares. It's pretty much mark out, and you can do it. Yank this one to the right. Just so powerful. Eight box. Uh, eight fill, rather. 62 through four. Yeah. Split for green. And this chops right through. This has play. Yeah. I mm. Went to the left side of the three pin. All right, the, the marks are now adding up in Millis's way. They got two, but the difference toward 40 here. We'll start a, a nine. Let me count these up real quick. An eight, an eight, for, eight for green and a nine for Douglas. Yeah, Central 2 still has two more marks than Millis at the moment, if I've counted correctly. And why are they leading by so much? Is it because of the double? Yeah, the double. Yeah, but the, that wasn't in this string. Uh, oh, oh you uh, mean in overall. the string. I mean, yeah. Yeah, no, overall. So it, there was a double in this, wasn't it? So Central Two does have a couple of double strikes. I mean, overall in the match, oh, okay. I haven't no, counted all they, the marks they, up because right, right, right. I don't have my usual spreadsheet of fanciness in front of me. You see. I'm sorry. I want to hear your voice more. I want, I want you to announce instead of uh, running all the tech. I appreciate it. It is slightly easier. <laughs> well, I, think, I, think, I think the viewers at home yeah. appreciate it especially because... Hang on, what's happened out here? Sorry. Uh, did, <laughs> did Timmy try to go, take off too soon? I don't know. Was the pin moving? I don't know. I think, I think something else. Oh, my goodness. Oh! <laughs> After all that. Oh, no. It was a single pin. He got iced. It was, yep. Oh! Oh! <laughs> the the allegation that he can't make single pins. I, I mean, I, I, I bowled next to the Easter Classic <laughs> last year. He hits a lot of single pins. Lamoni was <laughs> talking in his ear. I see. He got uh -huh. yep. stopped up in his rhythm. All right. So that's 51. <laughs> There's a real he said, he said allegations of what was said or not said and why Timmy's rhythm got thrown off there. But it's 10. Gains a pin in the exchange. Eight. Well, no, they changed it. It's a, it's a, it's a 51 now for green and uh, okay. eight, 81 for yep. Douglas. But importantly, uh, we're going to see that it's uh, a 40 pin lead. 361 to 321. But, it, you know, yep. there's. Their marks coming up again. Two through, again it's two through five. Yep. And Dan Esdell could have had a mark, but for that rotten luck on the head pin. He's been on the head pin more than not this string. Had at least uh, three splits by my count. When he is just the three six ten, he can start piling on. There, Esdell. Not bad. A little more to the left of that four pin might have, well, it's yeah. four ten to be fair. That's a big long message. Yeah, you need you need uh, satellites to get that one across. When he was, ooh, just wide. Yes, he <laughs> caught it anyway. He really, really played that wood well. Now you see and now you don't. Esdale ten. <laughs> what, what a read! What a read! Veteran read, as they all say. All right, so that's his fourth mark when he ours. He's at 92. And that means he, he, with the next ball, we expect him to go over 400. I mean, if he throws a one, if he throws two, he's, he'll be over 400. Yeah, if 
you want to be specific for for Phil would do it. No, because oh. well, he's there. Because it also means the pins count in the next box too, so it's four. Exactly, yeah, exactly, right. exactly. That's exactly. so fine. Yeah. Congratulations, Chris Winnie. I was on your four hundred. Yay! And high for the season. Three six ten still for Esdale. And now we are the only ones making any noise at all. Two out for Winnie Ars. Doesn't subscribe to that old adage of less into more, just trying okay. to get the sticks however he can. You know, he's been complimented Good for his out. pinning skills on multiple occasions, and taking solid shots like that is probably part of the reason why. Now he has a reasonable chance for nine, even though he didn't quite get his object on the last one. And there it is. Yes. In fact, oh, it's man. ten. That's how you get it. <laughs> and That's he does a Petey Weber, uh, pretty how you like me now, ch up block. <laughs> 107. I got your split conversion right here. We know what I'm saying, Corrado Pony? <laughs> that was a good 10 on, on that Spread Eagle variant. <laughs> well, not a, not, a moment that I, not a moment too soon that I compliment him for his pinning. Good grief. And there's my three times quota on that interjection. Frank DeLuca, strike in the works. Uh, yeah, position two, ca take camera one. Okay, let's go back camera one. You're right. Yeah. Here we go. Get a good look at the strike fill. Head pin four, tapped. Stays put. Might help the strike fill later. Okay. I mean, it means, means <laughs> makes the ball more likely to bounce off at a right angle and, and, and possibly take the 6'10", I guess. I think it, I think it would form a trampoline, absolutely. Wants to get on that two pin. Oh, dear. It's looking right. Hang on. Oh, What's going to start taking some sticks here? That's wow. all stacking up. All right. That's an eight, Phil. Those are big pins, Bob. 71 <laughs> through six. Latch wipes out seven. Those pins are worth their weight in gold. <laughs> They're worth their weight in urethane. Sure. Silicone? I think it's urethane. Nine it's box to Luca, 80. And an eight box for Latch, 81 through seven. That was a nine box. Yeah. Yep. Did we just get consulted for a scoring? No, they, they were just they were asking each other, but we, we we're among those that that are confirming that was a nine box. <laughs> it, it, negative adjustment on the score. Every now, every now and again, the bowlers consult us. Very rarely. We did get involved in a grievance committee hearing at ICC. And we're usually paying attention. <laughs> usually. I love I love the game so much, but you know the only thing that stopped me from paying attention to the game in front of me is talking about the game. Seven eight. What was that? Two seven eight. <laughs> All right. Uh, both of them open in the seventh. Uh, no second ball. I know they were open in the seventh. That's so right. those were not filled. That's right. I've tried. Look at yes, that's gone. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's not where he, he wanted to shoot that based he, on the body language. Really? I, I, yeah, it was brilliant though. He should. File that away and do it on purpose next time. That was great. Yeah. I'll be honest. I'm not sure what the problem was with that shot either. It's no, effective. No, the, the wood. It was double wood over there, so it was a little hard to read. But but you know when you when you hit the edge of it, it then the other wood was going to sh shoot left. It was pretty straightforward the way it worked. I mean, it wasn't that straightforward, but it, it was obviously the thing to, to do. I mean, whatever. He, he missed. He, he misfired and discovered. Like discovering oil when you <laughs> by accident. Ten box ninety one through eight. <laughs> that brings up Sean McDonald and Jim Keefe. Keep on the spare through eight. Yep. Well, if you just joined us, it's really late in string three. Keith Phil is then he crossed over seven. Phil left the king seventy four through six. McDonald is a better leaf. Funny game. Missed the head pin. Get a better leaf. Happens about 12% of the time. You know, if he gets the piece of that five pin, it could have. It would have. I say that because Paul asked me, isn't it, is it true that you sometimes do better when you miss the head pin? And I looked, sure. up, looked it up and uh, you know, did, ran uh, my, on my study of missed head pins. Almost for Keith. Missed head pretty pins good nine out of that. Head pins by pros. And 12% of the time when you, when you 
you know, look at the outcomes. 12% of the time, the, um, it was a better outcome for the uh, missed head pin. Take right. that the way. Yep. Eight bucks, 72. I'm reminded of one match where, oh, there's a strike. Keefe has his fourth mark in his first strike of this string. McDonald, now this is double pins here, three and nine. I see that front wood. Is that going to just deflect the ball away, or will it drive through? I don't Let's know. see. He actually oh, missed it shoot. altogether. Yeah, no, he hit the. He capped it. I don't think that was crazy. I, I think I think the side was right, and he just ended up hitting it. Because because that piece that piece was going to rely on a fortuitous bounce off the wall, and it wasn't there. Nine box eighty one through eight for McDonald. I'm reminded of a number of matches. Steve Vadney shared uh, with uh, Wolfman12395. That's Mike Sweeney, a lot of his videos. Oh, yeah. And there's a few of those strings where, especially one match he had against uh, Fran Honorado, both of them Hall of Famers, of course, where Steve Vadney was lopsidedly more accurate than him, but had mm. to put up 10 box after 10 box after 10 box just to win by one stinking pin. Yep. That was a matchup on Channel 5 in the late 90s. V Vadney, all, one of the all-time greats in, in uh, accuracy, 78% in my uh, in the in the matches that I scored. Yeah. Um, Such a immaculate four-step approach. O'Dowd, who went, changed from five steps to three, gets a six fill. And that's 83 through six. Scott Douglas is filling a strike. Still four match points on the line. Still time. I mean... That 35 and 21, that's not frozen. That's still there. Okay. Oh, that was that a two fill for Douglas? Uh, on a strike, though, no. now it's four, four. Oh. in that dreaded third ball. Oh, that's a four fill. Oof. Yeah, Oof. and now a nightmare out. That's good grief. Though beautiful when you get it. Odad is only going to get eight out of that despite an object pin hit. Two object pin hits out of that. Douglas finds a gap, and it's a four box as well. So, uh -oh. Fortunately, the strike fizzles. Where does that leave us? It should still leave Central 2 with some advantage, I would imagine. Um, 21, but two marks on the board, and because they both they belong to Millis. They both got eight pins, basically. A four fill and a four box for Scott Douglas. Okay, Oh, down got eight in the box. What up? What up? Splash, splash, and back row minus the 10 pin? All right. Well, Scotty's got a triangle. No, that's the, that's the 6, 7, 8. It is. Hmm. Do you play the wood anyway, even though the six is technically the object? You've got to you've got to make things spa splatter. He wants a pin. Okay. Well, he had. To, I don't know about that one. That was hard. Yeah. Again, how are you going to shoot the wood forward though? If you play the wood, I suppose. No doubt. Ten. Good ten. Easy as you like with the plank. Scotty gets eight. Scott Douglas, 77 through 8. Now Timmy Douglas. All right, it's uh, down to 19, under 20. 20 is the number that uh, you definitely want to keep it under. You know, it, keeps you, it keeps you out of double strike territory. Any mark can change it on a dime. Especially if you drop a dime. Dennis Green... Thought he got a pocket shot in that one. Can't carry a corner. Wood's available, but it might be too deep for the four pin is the problem. Oh. Douglas, four horsemen, 6-9. Douglas has even picked up his speed since the beginning of the match. Bob Lee says, fumbling for the radar gun. Just a triangle out. Dennis knew he had to take aim at that triangle. It was really his only reasonable crack at that. Tim. Three out. One, six, seven. Ten. Yep. For green. Green pins out well. No marks to this point. Only had that one four box really is a big blemish. Solid otherwise. Douglas will get an eight out of this. 42 on that pitch. Whew. Didn't find the head pin on that one. We still got his three marks in the first four to tide him over. There's a pin in the shadows up near the uh, 
There we go. Radar gun. <laughs> that, 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 that triangle you see in the middle there. That, that's Almost fell the pin away. That's where the lasers are that, may, that, that count the pins and also tell you the speed there in the middle on, on the ball return. Yeah. Sent, sent one of his pins all the way up there. Nice piece, but that mm, skinny dreadful piece. half Worcester plus 710. Skinny slice for green. Wow. Douglas. And 10 was hit. It, no decimals in this game, unfortunately. That was like a, it was a violin bow with a, with a ricochet on it. It was like, you know, like a, you put a lot of rosin on your bow and you. Two, seven, eight, ten. Staccato there. But it didn't work. Boom, gone. And there's that another was, single to pin. pile on no for wood. Central, too. Green has a wog wobbling, wiggling 10 pin for eight. 69. Yep. D to be fair, to Green has had at least four splits in this uh, string. So that 69 through eight is very deceptive. Yeah, we and we've seen already he had 274 prior. I mean, he could have had a 400. Unfortunately, it's going to likely fall short. Right. Scores have been confirmed. The final, final two boxes here still all to play for. Still possible for it to go either way. Winning ours. Call for a mix. Nothing doing. Three out. Esdale. Dan Esdale has the one, three, five, six, eight. There's no one right. else making a noise, so we have well, to be careful about how we speak as well. 99 balloons in the background. I like that, that one. Oh, hey, spare! Sweet pick up there. Unfortunately, Content ID now knows the name of the song, so we're demonetized. <laughs> oh, well. 3-6 three, six, three, six for Esdale on the third ball. Picks a stick for 9. 92 through 9. Winning ours, 117 in a ball, just continuing to compound. At 422 in a ball. Simply outrageous. He Through might go, 29. Go 450. Incredible. Uh, yeah, if he fills it with eight and gets a, gets a 20 box. Hang on, I got to take a look at high triples for the season. Highest triple we've seen is 453. Wait a second. And it was here on these lanes with Pete Crawford. Hang on a second. Yeah, it's not happening here, though. It's okay. That's that true. Was a six fill. Could be number it's two, though. 123. I think it's gonna be, it might be number two for the year. Yeah. That's the with a great drop here, 6'10". We'll see where that places him, and then I'll run that down in the high context of the high triple board. Oh, oh, oh. Winnie ours chops the head pin. Wow. So it'll go open in this one as well, or whatever you want to call it. 6'10", as Dale piles through. Not done yet. Second mark of the string. Yep, significant for Ryan's. Match points are still there. Uh, eight, eight and 131. Yeah, that gets a round of applause. Yeah, how about a how about a 436? That is the third highest triple in the Friday Night Pro League this season. Second is Justin Waters, 439. First is Pete Crawford Jr., 453. Congratulations, Chris Winniard. Former third was Ayot and Winchell with 432. Jimbo oh, Ayot and John Winchell. Esdale's last ball fill is a good one. How about a 19 box there? Sure thing. One, one, one for a three, four, seven for Dan Esdale. Good, three forty-seven. He struggled at times, and boy, did he put pile on in the ninth and tenth in the last two strings. Steve Latch and Frank DeLuca. Fifteen pins is all that Whoa. separates the string right now, though Latch is hoping to build that lead back up. If he can run this ten pin down, he might do just that. To look on a spare. His fill. Hits the two pin full okay. for a half Worcester. Ninety two. We've seen these pins fly. They flew earlier. Latch. Oh, even with the backup ball, couldn't find his way to the 10. Chance by the wayside. 
Franks try. Okay. Through the curtain, needs an out now. So it is 10 for Latch, 101. Oh no. That, that grabs Pence. They, that was a foul. They called a foul on that one. I, I didn't I didn't see it hit the channel, but it must hit the channel on Latches. And what was uh, DeLuca with a six? Yep. Right, 98. Thank you for catching that for me. And the two pin drops down. Yeah, I'm happy Pence on the third ball is a good out. Yep. Wish he could have had some more on the second ball, but still. So Lash, Lash uh, at 3.35 through 29 boxes. On the two pin is Latch. The high-low jack, our first look at this one, 1710. Frank DeLuca. Wood makes it a little easier. Hit the left side. And it Widens the seven pin in effect. Okay, here it comes. It's a good cool one. Five pin from behind for a strike. That is something. And DeLuca's probably going to have north of a 120 average on this one. Good outing for him. Latch's final ball hits the head pin and the 10 nice out. 110 to bring him up to 345. So look at one ball. Lead is down to 16, minus this fill. Whenever you do, don't move a muscle. <laughs> Finding Nemo. Another head pin. It's a good mix, all told. All right, he'll have another ball, and he's got a piece of wood out near the plate. In front of the three six ten, yep, should run down. These are big pins. Okay, there's nine one hundred seventeen for a three hundred seventy four for Frank DeLuca. Nice, nice job, Frank. So, how's that? Seven pins minus, so it's a yeah, virtual tie. I told got, you. And we got Keith in the strike. And Douglas total's not out of the spare. question. I mean, if um, you, I, mean I got to erase Frank's. Anyone who tuned it out of the first few boxes probably thinks this could have been an easy 8 over Central 2. Not so much. Okay, now. McDonald, good ball, but terrible split. And five on the first. He, remember, Keith on a strike could sure use. The second ball here. Yeah, has that guide rail in the back of the one, two to help out. Oh, no. Bounce it over. What a shot. What a shot. You were hit. He just about, <laughs> what the, what the F? What on earth? Okay. Out post. Yes, Keith gets it. Sweet. For a spare on strike. And nearly choking yeah. me up again. One thirteen and a ball. A nine box for McDonald, 90 through nine. How fortunes change. Aren't you glad you're watching, folks? We're in for a good one. You see the margins on your screen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Three. Back in the head pin and not three. Good grief. Five, seven, ten. Okay. That one. Off balance. Went way left. Yep. All yeah. right. So that's two. Is that two? Yeah. Okay. One fifteen. Didn't. But there is a uh, directional. Yeah, lead change. The, oh. Just don't say vector. <laughs> Two pins taken out for McDonald. Had a chance there. Eight pin cluster for Keefe. Let's see. That's a ball. Ooh, chance here. Six Wrap. was tapped from behind. Oh, no. Touched it. And will not take it. Ten Kick. for McDonald. 100. For a total of 339. And a ten. For 125, how about it? After that 92, now forgotten, Jimmy Keefe with a 346. Very good, yeah, 129 and 125. Fantastic recovery. All right, and a six-pin lead for Millis. Not how down you start, not, it's how you finish, right, Paul? Yeah, down to the last four. Tim Douglas, the only one on the board with a mark. 
This could. Oh, six pin won't go. Would tantalizing in front for Scott Douglas, but unfortunately it's the four, six, seven. Brendan O'Dowd takes out the <laughs> six and the ten, and the one right. eight is gettable. He's got wood behind the one that may help. I don't know. You know, you can you can you can easily hit the right side of the one to get a bounce off of that of that uh, cap. Yeah. This is why they bowl every ball, every pin on the third ball. You never got know. it exactly like I said it was going to go. Beautiful, beautiful spare. And now totals a question. Big question now. Scott Douglas, eight box, 85. That's two pins already. Then how big does the fill get? Well, well, well. That's six pins total, yeah. right? Central two does leave total. Lead total for now. That was a great Scott ball. can't get the time of day from the pins all of a sudden. A, yeah, the order of the two and one. Six, seven, ten with nothing. The fill by O'Dowd is left. That's two. That's two out. This almost went. The six went right. behind the seven for Great. Scott Douglas. Eight pin cluster. Oh, oh doubt. Smoke. Seven pins stranded. Oh, my goodness. Clobbered everything else. Nine, yeah, nine. for Scott Douglas. Sorry, Bob. Yeah, no, I was just saying the same thing you were. Nine. We're all hanging 94. on every. We're all hanging on every pin here. O'Dowd can't get the extra, but that's nine for a 122. So O'Dowd ends up with 377. Great showing. And Scott Douglas 329. All right, here's the difference. Or 327, I suppose. 327. That's how math works. Um, they're going to get a reset. Timmy Douglas is on a spare. So. Difference right now, 10 pins minus this ball in the in the string. Yeah. Four pins plus a ball, the lead on total for Central 2. Yeah. Remember, they, they only won game two by two, yeah. and they won game one by uh, 12. So Dennis Green has not had a mark yet. The string two here would be massive. The fill ball. Got head pin. Two, seven, seven. eight. Green. Now, this has a chance. One, three, five, six, eight. All those splits. Now he's away from the head pin for the first time in a while, actually. Green had good head pin accuracy up to that point. Oh, no. Ooh. Okay. Gotta hit His try. Got, got, got a head pin. Did he spill it? No. But those not <laughs> getting it down to yeah. one pin was big yeah. battle there. Pins might matter in the string total. And that's going to be a nine. Darn near ten, honestly. That's ten. Extra pin for Green. He's at he won't be thrilled with the 79 through 9, but again, a pin, clutch now. pin late. Every ball you throw. Now to the last box. Four pin lead for Millis. Central leads by 10 in the string. Boom. On the head pin and a yeah, three-way split. So that comment in chat, does throwing hard make it work better? Well, probably, though you don't always bust up the pins every yeah. single time. It does when, when, when you get balls bouncing off the side walls, off the curtain, it doesn't help. Thanks to DBR in chat for that question. All right, there, there's, there's room to squeeze this and cause the damage. They're, they're having a consultation up there with Timmy. Yep. Um, you see a little bit on the, on the low side of that piece of wood out in front of the, of the 10 pin. If nothing changes, it's 6 2 Central 2. What a shot! It did it. It did it. Perfectly played. Tim Douglas. That. Just, did he get it? Green does not get no. the four pin. Oh, what a time to fall short on a great bit on that split. All right, he's going to. So Green is going to finish his box. This has to be filled for Timmy, but he's in a massive position to possibly go 8 0. 89 for Green after a valiant effort and a lot of splits in that string. All right, it, this fill, it, it is a four. The difference is four. You see it there, folks. Yep. Four One. is high, five to win. Central two has six match points already. Five to win. He's got Tim it. got He's the got head got pin. It. It's an oh, eight nothing a sweep ten. for Central wow. two. Timmy Douglas, you are something. 
I think Tim Douglas is back, folks. Yep. 110 to bring him up to 355. Dennis Green, add that on. He's got 363. Two great anchor showings there. Two great showings from these two teams. There you see the totals on your screen. We can put the match points on screen as well. 8-0 right. wow. for Central 2. Again, congratulations to Chris well, Winniars. Clutch, a lot of clutch bowling there from Tim Douglas, really. Yeah. Tim Douglas deserves a lot of credit for the way he finished a couple of those strings. And uh, I'm impressed. I, I, you're right. You're right. I think he's back. I'm, I'm, I look forward to watching him defend his, his crown. And, Greg, you're going to be doing the call at the yeah. Easter Classic at, on uh, 28th of March, correct? I, I hope so. we got to talk to Lexi make sure uh, logistics are how long, but I think we'll figure that out. Uh, congratulations again to Chris Winniars, 436, which is now the third highest triple in the Friday Night Pro League. And what a great showing we had here. 8 nothing. your final match point score for Central 2 over Ryan's Millis here at Ryan Family Amusements in Millis, Massachusetts. For everyone here at Candlepin Bowling Network, that's Bob Lee. I'm Greg Guyar. Thank you very much for watching this presentation of the Friday Night Pro League and Candlepin Bowling Network. And 